All right, hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing here? Good, we have mic audio. Excellent, excellent. So, how's everybody doing? So, new series here. Uh, I've been talking about this a little bit. Uh, I plan to do this. So, this is uh, Captain's Workbench. So, the plan here is to build something and get it out in the workshop so you guys can uh, go ahead and use it. Let me just quickly uh, see. No music. Okay, let me fix the music. Thank you much for that. It has music, it's just it didn't get set up right. So let me fix that real quick. The uh, audio on the Chrome can sometimes be annoying. If the window is not open, it will not activate it, even though I'm using the same one as yesterday. So uh, i got to fix that. All right, there we go. So we've got music now. All right, good, good, good. So uh, thank you, everybody, who has helped me out on Twitch there. I just got affiliate today, so I was able to fill that out. So if you guys uh, prefer to watch over there, you can. Uh, if you guys have a, uh, if you have a Prime subscription and you do not subscribe to anybody on Twitch and you like to give it to me, you can do that as well. Uh, it's up to you guys. Uh, it's something I've been working towards. Just getting that going so that those who prefer to watch over there can watch over there as I'm restreaming on both. All right, so uh, enough of that. Let's go ahead and uh, let's start building. So build challenge kilo is going on at the moment. So that is to build a replica. So I'm going to build a quick replica myself. Uh, this pickup has kind of grabbed my imagination recently. It is the uh, Toyota Hilux Champ. I looked at this a little bit on yesterday's career build series stream. And uh, so I figured uh, build one of these, get it out on the workshop. So the cool thing about this is you can either get it in chassis form or you can get it in pickup. And it uh, allows for a lot of uh, customization, like you can put on uh, working equipment like that. Like that's a pet spa, you can put on campers, stuff like that. So I think we'll start by building the pickup truck version. It's kind of bare bones, it's supposed to be a utility pickup truck. Like you can see it has a proper size bed in it. Um, it's it's kind of dimensionally it's really good for store marks as you can see it's pretty square off which is nice has some cool features like folding uh, gates on the sides of the rear uh, on the simple side reasonably small so uh, should be pretty cool here and put some cool accessories on there so uh, probably make the pickup truck version here I think I'll do the long bed so yeah let's see if I can get the uh, dimensions that'll be good All right, Hilux dimensions. All right, good. So we got all that. So we'll move that off the side, and we'll go ahead and we'll work with that. So um, Yar, Let me move that a little bit so we can see. All right, excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so the plan is to try to kind of get this going and uh, done in an episode here. So go ahead and we'll get started here. Add-on editor is not what I want. Right here, let's see. Unlock all properties. All right, so let's look at the um, dimensions here. The Wikipedia page is helpful here. So total overall length. There's a there's a bunch of them. I think we're going to do the long one first. So that is um, that's chassis cab. Let me see. Long wheelbase. Okay, this is the regular long wheelbase. is uh, is uh, 5300 millimeters. Okay, okay. So we might try a little bit on the short end we'll see so kind of like the long wheelbase on this a little bit more but. so it's got a uh, let's see four cylinder yep i four is in there so we're gonna put an i4 in there turbo there's also a turbo diesel i4 so we'll do the turbo diesel i4 of course it'll be supercharged diesel there's a five-speed manual and a six-speed automatic, so we'll put a five-speed manual in there. Let's see. All right, so that is about the length. 
It's a little bit shy, but it's uh, not oversized. So go ahead and mark that out. Let's see what the height is. So the height should be 1735 millimeters. So let's do 1.75 there. Okay. So some of these are gonna have to grow just because of the game. You know, the seat's as tall as the seat is, so you kind of have to get it in there however you need to. So uh, 1785 uh, millimeters width. Uh, symmetry, please, thank you. So that is there, let's see. Um, that's 275, that's too much. That is 175, so that's about, that should work, all right. All right, so that's kind of our dimensional plane we need to work in here. Again, you know, it can grow because, you know, just game restrictions. Let's go ahead and read some chats. How's it going there, Alistair? How are you? How's it going there, Amanda? How are you? How are you? Daniel Christensen, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, I was kind of, I get a little bit of huff when the the uh, when the challenges start. It's it, that's when people most are trying to just like screw around and build shit that's not within the challenge. You know, once you kind of get into the challenge, it still happens, but it's much lighter. So it's always the most stressful and annoying part for me is just when the challenge starts and it's like I, you know got a bunch of people trying to already bend the rules and then I've you know I've had challenges before it's been a while where people were bending the rules to a point where it was making it, it unfair for the other competitors they actually some of those people got the boot um, you know and it was it's just you know that's the main thing I care about the most I just don't want it unfair to other people where it's like somebody built because I used to experience this myself when I would do Jersey challenges is you know, you'd build within the rules, and then somebody would break the rules, and then they'd be like, yeah, that's fine, like, three weeks in the challenge, and it's like, now you have to either rebuild or just uh, deal with it, so you're putting at a disadvantage, so it's just, it's it's a pain, you know, but, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep them going, at least for the time being. They are a hell of a lot of work, and it's just trying to find new ways to make it less, uh, a little bit smoother and uh, less stressful for myself, but, uh, yeah. How's it going there, Rasmus? Good to see you. How's it going there, CG? Good to see you. How's it going, Zizo? How are you guys? All right, excellent. Just uh, make sure you guys are reading the rules for there. It's pretty, most of them I think are pretty clear. I, you know, I, part of the reason why I went away from no concept stuff like that is it gets too much of the fantasy realm where it's just like this thing that never got built and, you know, then it's like, well, it's not a, you know, it's not really a replica, but never got built. It's just some fart that came out of an artist's mind. It's not really, you know, a replica. And then you're going to get, you know, potentially people who are actually doing the replicas can be put at a disadvantage by somebody building something that's just, you know, not even within the bounds of reason. So that's kind of why you put some of those restrictions on there. And the restrictions are what makes a build challenge work is... That's what makes it a challenge, is if it was like, do whatever you want, it's it's not really a challenge, you know? All right, let's see. Um, wheels out one. So I'm going to try to measure this wheelbase to move the rear axle. I'm kind of having a drought of what I wanted to, I wanted to build lately, so this is a little bit helpful. Let's go one and a quarters on here. I don't want these tires too beefy. They, you know, you start getting into problems with uh, cars and trucks when the wheels are too big. You get big wheels, uh, you figure the bigger the wheel, the, the longer the diameter is. And so then you don't get as much steering uh, turn. So you can only turn your wheel, say, 20 degrees because the wheel will hit the wheel well. So especially a lot of these Japanese trucks are designed to, you know, be like um, service vehicles for workers like, you know, plumbers, electricians going around the cities. And so they need to be able to go down tight alleys. And they need to be able to park. 
And so you would want something that has a reasonable maneuverability. And so having those small tires helps with that sort of thing. So it's actually got some reasonably small tires. Like if we look at the pick picks here, you can kind of see it does not have oversized wheels on it, you know, and they it shouldn't, you know, you really cut into that. Also, you know, um, you know, talking about just the basic physics of land vehicles like this, you know, right there, that's a, a three block uh, diameter. And so if you want circumference, that's probably like two some, two and change meters. So for every one RPS, you go on two and change meters per second. As the wheel gets bigger, you're going faster and faster and faster. And your torque goes down, your speed goes up. Uh, there's actually a cool video by Heiss um, talking about why steam locomotives used to have different uh, size wheels. And the reasons were, you know, you had... Um, you know, if you, need, if you had a train that was designed to go from place to place with passengers that was supposed to go fast, you tend to have larger wheels. Uh, if it needed to have a lot of torque, it tend to have smaller wheels. You know, and so uh, some of these things come into play as well with these vehicles. You know, put a little I-4 in there, it's going to be a hell, of a hell of a time trying to run big wheels on that, you know. Starting to lose some of that torque you have. All right, so let's go ahead and let me check the Wikipedia again for... Uh, wheelbase. So the long wheelbase is uh, 3,000 millimeters. So let's go ahead and measure where we're at. We're probably close on that. Uh, we're within one block. All right. So we'll put it right here, and then I think we're good on that. A pretty good guess. All right. So that's the long wheelbase truck there. All right, so let's start putting in a kind of a floor pan just to start. You know, the bed will get stepped up, but I'm just trying to see where my seats are going to go. Let's actually get rid of that floor pan for now. Let's grab seats. Nice thing with a pickup, too, is don't have to worry about the back. All right, so it looks like with the width as it is, we're going to be doing a padded seat and a regular driving seat. Let's see. Um, there, I think, and then the seat back, so... All right, nice. I'm kind of just looking at some of these interior picks, trying to see how we're looking for. Um, it's Japanese. Let's do it the way it should be here. Let's do... Because it probably will never come to the U.S. because we can't have anything cool. That is our fate. Um, Got to get all the big oversized rubbish. Um, that's what we what we're good for. All right, there we go. Right, and then I'm going to probably do a block off the back for the... Um, I'll measure the bed length with, with that. There was a good infographic on one of them for the bed lengths. I'm trying to see if I can find it. There it is. Uh, 2.6 meter bed. So let's measure that. So that's 275, that should be about perfect. All right, that's that's good. So I'm happy with that gap behind the seats. I don't want it to be too crunched. And then it has a step here, so a little bit of a step.
And then again, I have to kind of consider some of the game mechanics of like, you know, going over some of those bridges can be quite tough, so I gotta keep an eye on that. Got a couple options with this wheel well. I could dump these down to ones. Let's dump them down to ones and see how we like that. These are all those are ones. Let's see. Looks a little bit, but I can put in more uh, blockage here now. Let me look. It's not gonna be able to get it in there anyway, but. Um, Wheel wells looking pretty oversized. So I might do the top. So definitely I don't want that high of a, that low of a front bumper that causes problems. So what we'll do here is, I usually do to kind of accommodate this and make it look reasonable is just go like this. And then we'll go a little bit high, bigger on the tires. Fill the wells a little bit. You kind of get stuck, stuck in a place where you can't, um, yeah, you have, you have these tires you just can't build in there anyway, so it's like you might as well. All right, and then we can color that a darker color to make it so that it blends in a little bit better when we do that. And then we'll pop these tires back up. That way we can kind of fill the wheel wells because they, they keep the same dimensions, ultimately. And we'll see how that looks when we get building. I'm just trying to get the general shaping and framing out. Kind of has an almost built-in bumper. So we'll see, uh, kind of the modern bumper is a built-in bumper anyway. So we'll put a little bit of design work on that. To try to shape it front bumper is reasonably high this side panel is a little bit on the low side so that helps out there and then there's definitely some angling on this I'm trying to decide I, I need to be careful i don't screw up the door so Kind of looking at the build, trying to get it to uh, kind of mimic the real one there. So that shouldn't screw up the doors. Put that in. That looks pretty good to the real one. And then we got to think about the windows, how the windows are going to go in. They're going to have to be pretty straight. So. Ultimately, I would like to do twos, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get a two in there to work with the glass unless I really dick with the glass a bunch. Try not to have to screw with the glass too much. That's a four cylinder. We shouldn't have, shouldn't have too much problem stuffing it in there. Again, I can play with the dimensions a little bit because it's in game stuff. Pretty square bottoms, but. Pretty square bottom on here, but the um, we'll see how it looks in game. Okay. Usually these are pretty high windows. I don't think they even have a rear window. Ah, there's one. Okay, it's a real tiny rear window. Okay, good. So yeah, it fits about that space there. Yeah, it's definitely got, it It has a um, two by one. Like this is what it looks like IRL. It's like that almost, a, that's a little, that's excessive. That's excessive, um, let's see. Um, let's see. 
you're already well exceeding the height. That's just the, that's kind of the game thing is, you know, it's, you know, I'd have to have these seats sitting underneath. Might be able to push them down. Let's see if I can push these down, get the height down a little bit. I don't want all that shit. Um, let's go to here. I have to worry about all the me mechanisms too. So that, that could probably work like that because we have these covers there. So drop that height. That will help overall keep it from being too cartoonishly large. Okay. Yeah, we'll kind of plan on doing that. That will help drop it a little bit. Yeah. And that will let me put in windows a little bit lower. I don't think I want full three windows on there. We'll go there and then let's see. Something like a two, three, something like that, maybe. Chat in one sec. Alright, let's check this chat, yeah? How's it going, Tana? How are you? How are you? Yeah, I used to that used to bug me. CG is like literally, I I didn't I didn't submit to one of the jersey challenges because they did that. They changed the rules last minute, and I was like, nope. No. Yeah, I wanted to be a shorter challenge, something uh, kind of simple. Yeah, I like the small. You know, I love a small pickup truck, and they just don't make them here anymore. So Toyota's got a lot of people excited who like a small pickup truck, which is kind of nice. Yes, yeah, the wheel size. The wheel size for any vehicle really is a is a gear at the end of the day. Like even a screw and a propeller is is the is the final gear. You know, so if you think of that, even like the the blades of a turbine are the final gear. You have bigger turbine blades, you're gonna get more torque to move the N1 blades, which, you know, the bigger they are, the more uh, airflow you're getting in there, so. Yeah, I really like this truck. Like, you know, I like the original Hilux as well, but it's like, this is, um, you know, this is filling that small pickup market, which unfortunately, especially in the US, just is absolutely dead, there's nothing in the US you can't get anything that's not a four-door automatic uh, parking lot princess and it just it's really kind of sad is like the small pickup trucks of like the 70s and 80s are dead and it sucks because they uh, they served a good role you know you could use them for actual like work duties and and that was really cool and they kind of screwed that up and made it so you you know you don't have that option anymore and it kind of sucks yeah, because they were good for work vehicles that you could, um, you know, and, and then, you know, the way cars are now is they're, you know, pretty expensive and they're, um, you know, you get a lot of frills and bullshit you don't really need. And so it's uh, kind of nice when you get a no frills, like even the base models have crank windows on this. Like I'd love to get just an old base model crank window as an additional vehicle. And they just pretty much, you know, some of it is like safety stuff, but a lot of it is just, you know, is they're going where the market is. In the market, people have pretty much like, they want crossovers and silly shit like that. And so, um, you know, and especially in the US, people just think they need a big vehicle for everything. And it's like in Europe, you know, they, it's funny, like US is like, oh, you know, I have a family, so of course I need this gargantuan thing. And like people in Europe are like, yeah, we've been using a four-door car for, you know, dozens of years here. 
Uh, if our family travel, no problem, and you guys need this huge monstrosity, why is that? <laughs> yeah. Probably gonna wanna knock the front bumper down a little bit, we'll see. General shaping, let's go sit in it and see how it feels. I'm liking it small size. I want it to be small. I don't want this to be a mammoth. Okay, good. So if I put in some wedge blocks in here, that should help the head problem there. I've got good vis in here. You know, there's one thing that you deal with a lot in games is you have to worry about, you know, like something that would be fine IRL is not always the case in a game. Is like you feel too crunched. You feel, um, you know, too confined. You don't have the actual space for your character to move around in there. Um, that was something that they actually were dealing with in Star Citizen a bunch. Was they had to make everything enormous because, um, you know, this is what another thing when people talk about, like, you know, they want, um, you know, like uh, NPCs. Let's see real quick here. Uh, you know, like one issue Star Citizen had with some of the NPCs is theoretically the NPCs are supposed to be able to work on your ship, and because of that, they need to be able to walk around. Well, you know how like dumb NPCs can be sometimes, and uh, you know they they're not able to navigate the interior of your ship unless it's way oversized, and that's part of the problem. Is it um, you know for for just NPCs being able to move around, you need that. Probably be able to square this door out a little bit. So better square that out a little bit yeah okay now pretty much you know the thing here is this does not pucker in the bottom too much it goes up I'm looking at different variants of it too so it's it actually does have a little pucker there at the bottom so let's leave that in there it actually does have a little bit of a pucker there and then the bed actually extends past it like this so that's how it actually looks in there so um, kind of leave that pucker in there continue with some chat here build a little Toyota Hilux champ yep don't want the Titanic to miss sink I need my sinking button in there that'd be cool H1 Check guys. All right, so moving along pretty well here, I think. Now Citrus is in the old uh, Twitch. Excellent. I've got some. Uh, I think I have a couple uh, emojis in there for regular, and then some of them are. You have to be a uh, subscriber on Twitch for that, but I think most of them are just freed. Um, let's see if I can bring up the uh, let's see the hood. I'm trying to check the hood. The hood almost has a one by two. It almost comes down on the front a little bit here. It's almost like a one by two here. It's one by two though is too much. Yeah, so it's like almost maybe a one and a one by one wedge. Come on, dude. Drag the fucking thing. There we go. Yeah, even that looks a little funky, funky donkey. Like I might just do, might just pickle in the ends here, like this. That's way on the square side. If I do that, I can push that back one. So. Bumper. The bumper is 
reasonably low. I'm going to have to probably drop it a block. It should go about a half a block, but I'm going to have to drop it a block, so... And then this is like recessed, which is interesting. So let's try recessing this and see if that, if I can make that work. Uh, it's not gonna go like that, fine. Um, so let's try this. this. This could be interesting. We'll see how this comes out. Yeah, I can't go like that. That's gonna be weird. Um, like it's on it's almost like a one by two, but I can't get the one by two to fit above with the lights. So. Yeah, that would then be funky. So I think we'll keep it a little bit more squared out. See inverted, see if no oh, that's fucked up that is. Uh, let's see. Cut some of the height by putting in wedges in there. I think that's good. There we go. That's got kind of the face that it has. A little bit less detailing, but I think we'll be all right here. Let's do all that bullshit. Height's just height is always a is a tough time in game because it's just like you know, you character as tall as it is. I'm already pushing through the floor, which means I got to try to cover under the seat. Uh, but we still have room because of these little side rails for drivetrain and everything, because I need that. And let's cut some of this fluff out. Get an engine compartment going in here. I want to put a four-cylinder uh, four in here. Uh, don't do symmetry there, you scum. Poking on the tires, I tend not to like. So that's a fuck. Thank you. 
high there. If I can knock this tire size down again and see what it looks like. Yeah, see, it doesn't fill up the wheel well enough. That's funny. And then you can't put any blocks in there, and the tire's smaller. It's not actually smaller, so it's kind of annoying. All right, tire size always a pain in the ass to get right in the game to fill the wheel wells. a tiny bit of a proud bumper, but not enough to actually stick it out. So. I'm just going to stick fluid ports in here for now, just to kind of see what it's doing. And then I'm going to end up doing paint blocks, but this is just an easy way to kind of get some, give it a little bit of look so I know what it's kind of looking like. Okay, got some, a little bit of a look there. I do like its square boxy nature. That's how the real one looks, which I like. All right, we need to do something with this roof. Of course, the one by three, which is always a bitch. Um, hmm, that's tough. Um, let's see. Where's my, okay, let's try, this is tough. The headrest is here, so. Gotta kinda go like that. Yeah, that puts it right. Like he doesn't have to look up, but that puts it right in his face there. Rest it. I'll try to see if I have a one by three to stick in there. Always desired one by three that is, takes about two seconds to XML. I talked about how like the things that seem like super easy for the devs to do, if the community's already done them or there is a way to do it, like you know, it's almost like they're wasting their time to do it. It's like to kind of your own worst enemy is you go build those parts yourself and you kind of see like they don't need to, you know. It's the same thing with like mods people are building mods or something then the developers are like oh I, I can do other things that are priority to me I don't want to go through the ceiling though I think that's kind of fucked up um, but overall I'm liking the shape let's start working on the bed The other thing too is kind of tough with real vehicles is like it's a very minor angle down here and the only angle I have is is a one by one essentially to stick in there so I'm like that looks a little bit too much. All right, so I'm thinking mid door for the actual bed. Cause I need to have uh, wheel wells come up over these wheels in the bed. So. If I do the bed up this high, I can have folding sides and a nice flat bed to put things on. And then I can make the folding, uh, I can't make the folding beds in there. They do go all the way down, which I'm not going to be able to really do. If I can wheel well this, it would not be terrible. I think, yeah, we can. 
but I just delete that in here. Oof, the angles are just fucked. Pulling shadows like crazy. Look at them. Ugh. Pulling shadows like crazy. Let me see what I can do. Pulling shadows like crazy. That's the big thing that's the struggle with right now. Get these wheel wells worked out. That's pulling a shadow like nuts. Try to figure something out for these. We might have to XML some blocks in to do wheel wells here, but. It's it pretty high, but it's I'm already way over the height too on it, so it's gonna be problematic that I'm already over the height because I don't want to lower the wheels down more. Now we'll see overall. Like it doesn't like proportionality matters more to me than dimensions because like you're never gonna be able to get dimensions right because you just have too many other game things you have to worry about. Like that looks just way too high, like that. game ends up things get way too big you know way too fast so try not to do that and I'd like to if I make the wheel small enough I can go straight across the top like that which is what I'd like to do and then I can I don't need bed covers here anymore if I do that I can go ahead and just cut those out which is nice the wheels won't show through it's not too, too bad there. I think I'll put in some XML block to cover, to fix the wheel well in there. It's gonna be tough to do. Um, I should be, I yeah, I should be able to fit in with the engine size we have there. Let's check that out. And then, yeah, I should be able to stick it in there too. So might be able to be all right with that.
Got a flush bumper, so we'll leave it like that with a flush bumper. It just makes the flush bumper kind of tough to work with here. I didn't, I didn't merge those fronts at least. Looks a little bit of like a low rider, so maybe uh, I don't want to go up on the wheel size. So try to put a little bit of a trim on the bottom, see if I can't get that to look less of a low rider. It's looking awfully long too, so let's see what we can do here. Check that. That looks a little less low rider. -y. It's super long, but dimensions are pretty good. Dimension are pretty correct. Let me quickly read some chat. Just remember for the challenge, I am driving this to the hospital, so it's supposed to be something I can just take on the road down from the base to the hospital, so make it so that it's road legal so that I can get it from there to there and not have it go five miles an hour, too. You know, things like I've seen people building shifters. Shifters are fine. They, you know, they drive on the road to go 30 miles an hour. It just needs to be something that I can take on the road a little bit. <clears throat> uh, let's do a quick measure. Uh, what is it? 175 tall, I think, is max. Again, like at the end of the day, I know a bunch of people doing the challenge. Proportionality kind of matters more important to me than like exact dimensions because like it's unlikely you're gonna get the exact dimensions you know trying of course but like this is one block too tall for the real one um you know but proportionally you know it, it works pretty well with character that is five and a quarter check my reference here for the max length on some of this uh where's the wiki So the length is five, uh, yeah, so just about five. I think we're, we're one block too long. Yeah, we're a block too long, so let's fix that. So I think what we'll do is we'll drag all of this in. So like, you know, there's gonna be certain areas. So for example, like it's one block too tall. So if it's now looking overly tall because it has to be one block too tall, like I'm already, I've already got the seat through the floorboards. Uh, I've got a seat, the ceiling as low as it can go really and be functional in game. <clears throat> you know, then you can like, if you wanted to make it uh, wider or longer to, you know, to then be proportional, that's probably better than having it, you know, three out of the four exactly. And then it looks wonky and looks warped, you know? All right, so that's better. A little, the long bed was getting too long the tapered sides there are helping it not look like it's slammed to the ground as much you know i can look around or good here can look out the back and reverse so you know it's usable that's kind of nice too is... all right let's go ahead and 
work on the motor. All right, so I want an I-4. This has an I-4 in it, so I want an I-4. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the arse. Um, let's see, is it transverse? You know, worst case, I can go to a flat. You know, again, it doesn't have to, don't have to be perfect. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll lie for us. Um, I'm trying to see if it says transverse or not. I'm thinking if it's an I4 with that big of a hood, it's not transverse. But I might have to go transverse and see. Let me see if how my hood my hood's a little bit scrunched, so I think I'm gonna push back the um, the cabin a little bit. I'll push back the cabin. Again, I'm trying to get that proportionality pretty correct here. That should help it look like it was looking too long and a little bit scrunched on the front. So this should help it with a little bit on that. into right, that's proportioned a little bit better like the roof height IRL is of course super thin it's like this thin and that helps cut the top of the roof down we have one block so I can't really get it as thin as it would be that's a little bit better with a little bit more hood in there doesn't have a huge hood, but it had a little bit more than I gave it. So. All right, and then that is still scrunched for an I-4, so I might just put a flat four in there. At least it'll be the same cylinder count. And then where's my centerpiece here? What are we looking at here? Okay, we can reroute underneath the straight underneath for the transmission. Okay. Can't go through the axle though. So. There'd be only a three. Could make it a three cylinder just because a four is overpowered kind of in game. So. Let's see, I'll do a flat four, screw it. Do a flat four. I three or flat four. This is going to be a problem. Yeah, so I'm thinking. Yeah, we've run into problems if we if we try to keep going. I. And I haven't even thought of cooling yet, so that saves me some space here. We only have, uh, let's see, can I push that? Okay, we can push that back one, because this can go. All right, that that's helpful, actually. What was that? 
No, this is, okay, that's not supposed to be there. I didn't recognize what those blocks were doing there. Um, yeah, there's not supposed to be blocks there. Anyway. Oh, come on. Stop deleting seats, you scum. Yeah, they're not supposed to be there, so. I thought that was a little bit more spacious than it should be. to go here. Sorry. Go like that. Tr push the transmission back another block. That. That gets all end of the seat. Alright, so transmission will go there and then we'll come back for the front axle. Uh, of course, you're going to have to Gag all over the town here. Let's go. Um, it's the center of the seat right here, right? Real one is two-wheel drive, but of course, you know, in game, two-wheel drives do not perform shit. So, um, again, usability is an important thing of it. So, I'd rather have it usable than, uh, you know, 100% accurate, and then it doesn't get used to build because it just doesn't conform to what the game needs, you know? So that's a lot of the what we need set up there, and then that. Hmm, that screws everything if we do that. Um, red in the back, maybe. Oof, that's gonna be tough to plumb. I'm trying to think of cooling options here. Um, close with this. Let's put a proud bumper on here. That's going to help me out. Again, some of these things are going to have to be decisions you make just because of game mechanics. Yeah, I like a slope bumper. Uh, if, if the bumper is going to be low, I try to go slope bumper. And the reason I do that is the, um, the likelihood you hit it on something in game is pretty large. You know, can still do a flat bumper if you want, but it's it's just tough sometimes if the game likes to likes you to hit shit. Do a little bit of a proud bumper there, and then I should be able to get in. That looks a little bit more beef cannon too. With what I want? Nah. 
go. Um, yeah, a little bit of a proud bumper on there. It's awfully low, but um, I'll deal with see what I can do to pump the, the legs up there. But that's uh, hopefully I can get a radiator in here now. I'll take care of some of my decorating needs too. You need to cool this sucker. All right, so I'm gonna run off the front axle for an impeller. I'm trying to get the necessaries in here. That's. Let's see how low it is. Oh, that's slammed. Jesus, that's slammed. All right, let's bump up the tires again. It's gonna be a constant deal with the tires here. Trying to get these bumped up and bumped down. I think this tire was artificially small, too, so. Like, if you look at my character next to the truck, too, everything has to get oversized in game. Like, this is a small truck, and it is already up to my shoulders. You know, so it's just... Kind of things just get oversized in game. You can't do much about it. Not worth fretting about it, you know? That gives me a little more engine uh, space. Oh my God, I got that on the first try. That shocks me. That's backwards. I thought I got it in the right way, but I guess not. So we've got cooling in there. And then we'll probably do directionals and do headlights here. All right, directionals and headlights there. This will just be part, uh, what I'll do is I'll do paint blocks and I'll integrate that in with the regular grill. can actually so the bumper and the real uh, Hilux champ is more like one by two wedges so this will take some of the squareness off the bumper anyway I was trying to get the one by twos in there earlier anyway so that will help a little bit there that rounds it out a little bit better yeah it looks like a tiny little truck but like again you realize that the hood is up to my shoulders you know so it's not that uh, not that small
I don't mind the clipping of the wheel wells all that much. So let's paint those black. They'll blend in with the tire. I won't be able to see it. They fill out a little bit better. A little bit here, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I'll paint the bed darker color, and that should help a little bit. All right. The other thing, too, that I had to worry about was the uh, pivots for the door. So how did... Okay, that's the dash. All right, good. So let's see. What do we do? We have full three size doors. Okay, so let's grab those. Three by threes. Okay. So the whole reason I'm putting these down there is I want to be able to not have the paint be the same. so far. I put a little paint on this. That'll help things out a little bit. Let's go. Go like almost tire gray in there. That will help blend it with the tire so it doesn't look like the tire's hitting it as much as it is. Okay, now the tire blends in a little bit better into the wheel well. A little bit more of a black up here. Problem is that um, that grill needs to be the same color, but we can make that work. There we go. And the lights are black. Um, yeah, I can't do like it has a little bit of white trim around it. I can't do that trim. So I think I'm gonna do is keep this white, and that will kind of emulate the trim. The base model is white. Basis is white. Right, let me check chat in a second here. Go ahead and catch up on some chat, yeah? Yeah, as long as it works well, that's great. I'm just not going to hold people to like, oh, it's, you know, it's supposed to be a two-wheel drive and you made it a four-wheel drive. Like, little gamification stuff. It's mostly aesthetics, like, how well does it look to it, you know? And I'm, I'm just letting people know that, uh, you know, but that's, um, you know, those types of things aren't something to be super concerned about. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, transverse. Transverse is sideways. V8. Yeah, that's uh, like cooling, as long as you don't run at a high RPS, like some people act as like cooling is the most impossible thing ever. And it's because they're running like literally no, um, no friggin, uh, no gearboxes. And so they're running at really, really high RPSs. And of course, they're never going to be able to cool it. You know, you have to rev out to red line. You know, if you sat on red line the whole time, all the time yeah of course you'd overheat you'd overheat any car you know and and so a lot of these people are just they're not like you know that's some of the same crowd that complains that you know everything sounds like a lawnmower none of my stuff sounds like a lawnmower because i never get to those rps's that sound ridiculous and it's because you put a transmission in there you know and, and it's just people who have yet to figure out how to do a transmission and so 
That's often their issue with cooling. That's often their issue with that. Or they're still trying to do raw water cooling in boats. That is gone. Um, you know, if you start to think about why the devs probably made the flow rates through fluid ports so low, it's probably because four atmospheres kills your player. And so, you know, if you pump air in the room too fast, it's going to cause a problem where you kill your character within two seconds. So anytime you're trying to move air around anything, you're going to kill your character in two seconds. Well, that's not, that doesn't work, right? So uh, you limit the flow rate through the fluid ports to give you a fighting chance. The problem is it has unintended consequences where down the road you try to do other things and now the flow rate's too low. So, you know, that's kind of a balancing thing. working. We'll see if I'm, you know, I think we're going to be good on power too. I'll even down it to a two cylinder if we're good on power, but um, all right, so let's go ahead and save this. Now, because I'm not actually participating in the challenge, I'm not going to... Like, if you guys don't want to call it, like, what, like you're afraid to, like, call it, you know, the brand name, that's fine. You know, just, again, just show me a picture of what it was inspired by, you know. Like, I might brand this out as Pat and put it as um, inspired by the Toyota Hilux, you know. Do it as my brand. But, you know, I, I personally, I wouldn't worry about, like, some people worried about... Uh, you know, copyright on the pictures. You don't get copyright for that. It's when you are, you know, trying to um, pawn them off as your your own, or you're making money off of them. And you know, it's like. And then there's also you have. Um, it does not vi violate copyright to do commentary. For example, like if you were going to review Cheerios, and you had a box of Cheerios, they can't sue you for copyright for you showing Cheerios in, in your review. You're actually you're commenting on that thing, you know, so it's um it's protected under that, or else you'd you'd be able to do no parody, no satire, you know, you wouldn't be able to do commentary on any of that stuff. You wouldn't be able to do reviews. That's how all that's allowed, you know. All right, so that's that. I'll put the back of the seat in. Let's say this, um, and then I want to bring in my stuff here. So let's do. Module engine tutorial. Let's bring the whole thing in. Because I've got the... Uh, and I'll bring the transmission in after that. Right, let's see. What am I doing here? Come on, come on. Go away. Go. Quickly. Yeah, this is the nice thing about, I think it was Alistair talking about, like, it's nice once you get a bunch of your own microcontrollers and everything, you don't have to, it makes building really quick because you now have um, everything all set up, you know, and you don't have to dick around with it. You know, you can just, uh, you can cut those again you know you can't use other people's stuff in the workshop you can use your own stuff you know, again the point whole point of that rule in the challenges is so that you uh so that you learn how to do these things yourself you know because you get some people who've been building for years and they always use somebody else's x y and z and then they never learn how to do it and the problem is you get a community who does not know how to build in the building game and then the problem becomes that um you know, they're, uh, you know, you can't fix your own problems. So any small change the devs make now becomes a disaster to the community, which it shouldn't be. You know, if you understand how a lot of these things work, like I, I don't freak out when the devs change something because, okay, I'll just fix it. 
and it takes me two seconds because I know how to fix it. So it's part of that is there's a big benefit to learning how all the mechanics work and being able to fix some of these things on your own. And so, you know, so there are people who've participated in the challenges who never knew how to do these things. And now they're so simple to them that they do it all the time. And it was, you know, it's kind of that kind of got to jump in the pool sometimes. And then you realize, oh, it's not that hard, you know. That's all connected shite. No, oh, come on. The selection tool can be annoying sometimes. There we go. Alright. Let's do... Starter. Alternator. All right, so right here off of the drive shaft. Give me the fucking T piece. Oh, I clicked on three times. Freaking flip. Go. space than I'd like. Um, let's do that, this instead. That's the pasture side anyway, right? Yeah. Almost run underneath, but I can't. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna run up on top. That's in, that's out. Okay, there's air. Let's see what we want for fuel. So beautiful. No, that's all right. Gorgeous.
trying to see if this is gonna bug me. If I put the transmission under here, how did I delete the seat just then? There we go. I'm trying to see if I push it under here, if that's gonna bug me, if I can see the arrows on there. What I could do is push the transmission further back. I think that's what I'll do. Let's go like this. Okay. Let's just do that. They got other things like exhaust and fuel to run here, so I don't want to screw around with that too much. on the axle. Transfer case like that. Go. And run exhaust off of here. Uh, it's gonna bitch to run exhaust like that. Um, Oh, you blocked but no, you're not blocked by the air. I didn't think it was blocked by the air. Anyone else been noticing cats have been really weak and they're not really de smoking? So 
fuel exhaust, air is all in there, so get the main basis of the engine. I always, you know, when I did the tutorial, I put in the electric radiator. Part of that is because I don't want to get, like, 28 messages of people like, I can't cool my engine. I, you know, I wanted to go faster. I wanted to go to 350 miles an hour, so I uh, increased the, the number. And now it overheats. Um, you know, so I put in the coolant pump in that. Now I'm pretty much doing impellers for everything. So we don't need coolant pump. We don't need radiator fan anymore. Which gives us some space. Plug that up, see if we need a start. I need to do manifolds across the engine too. I've yet to do that. Yet to uh, uh, join the banks. Right, let's check all this and hook all this up here. Good, let's go ahead and we have starter, alternator, RPS. Let's make sure I grab the RPS node on there. Okay, look like I grabbed something else here. Fuel clutch. Okay, and I think we're good here. Let's uh, seat should be hooked. Yep, yeah, okay. We can get a start. Electricity, I didn't hook up and I don't put any electricity, so let's just do a quick bang together of electricity. Alright, we're up and running. That's there's no there's no transmission, so it's um That's more than enough power, so you know, I have no transmission on here, and it's already powered up. Ground clearance isn't too bad. Like, getting out here, it's a little bit of an overhang, but it's not horrific. Smoke's going to annoy me. That's I can't multi-cat this. Like, I've got some builds that have a bunch of cats, and they're still smoking, so don't know what to do with that as far as just do reduce. So, like, if you guys have an issue, uh, we'll see you later there, CG. Thanks for hanging out. You know, I, if I were you guys, don't worry about smoke. I, I can do reduced particles or I don't really care. It's just the, um, you know, it's kind of a thing going on right now. So instead of fretting about it, we'll just push on. All right, good. So that's good. Let's save this real quick. All right, here's the transmission tutorial. So likely this is going to be pretty good for the transmission I already have in here. Need some tweaking. This is a pretty powerful engine for this, so shouldn't have any problems. Alright, the new thing I'm doing now is... I'm doing two things. I think uh, five will probably be the park brake. That's what I often use that for.
Let's see what is that. There we get X. Five's park break. Okay. <clears throat> X. And what are you in the bottom? W. Or uh, and then what is that? Z. Z. X and W or Z. All right. So if we either put on the parking brake, we'll put it in neutral. Or if we um, if we push the um, if we hold down the down arrow to downshift, it, after three seconds, it will uh, it will put us into uh, it will put us into neutral. And then this needs to connect through here. It doesn't need to, but I could I could daisy it through, so keep it like that. Now let's make sure that's all. We're all connected here where we need to be. Okay, let's go to engine micro. So now this daisy chains through, so the seat goes through this transmission through there. That saves us a, a block. That's all good. And then I don't need the gear indicator on there anymore. Some of these things I did for, you know, the basics where it tries to simplify it for people. And I personally, I would want it a little bit like daisy chaining can be complicating for complicated for some people. So I'd try not to make it too complex there. And we can run. We have plenty in here to run panels. Let's update and check what got disconnected to engine micro right there. Everything else connected here. Yep. Okay. What is that? Yep. Okay. Good. Let's uh, do some electricity. Let's go test out the transmission. can't hear the gear shifter why I don't know I don't like that we step through the ceiling that's because I have um, the XML blocks in there up downs reset 100% let's see shift up slash down I need to make an up an updated module that has all my stuff in it Eventually what I think I'm going to do is I'll make a, um, to go with the module engine tutorial, I'll make another, a new car tutorial. All right, first gear. All right, nice, plenty of power for takeoff there. There's third. Fourth. It's fifth right there. We didn't smoke till fifth. All right, good. So that's pretty good. All right, nice. What I can do to get rid of this, um, probably being able to get through the ceiling is go like that. That way, that'll keep me from getting through the ceiling. Uh, let's go ahead and we want the stability controller in here. Steering stability controller. All right. Um, I changed the way this works now. So 
for example, your left wheel, if, uh, if you need your left wheel to go backwards, just do this. Cut it and go like that. The, that will invert your steering and your uh, flow of travel will go that way. For the tutorial, I just did an inversion. Yeah, part of it's teaching people inversions and part of it's um, simplicity. So I need to fix this up for that. Stay the same. And what you can also do is on this one, because I use six as my uh, start for the engine, you can also make that this so that this the wheels don't jitter when you're uh, just sitting there and they'll eat up battery so you can do that as well and then this becomes my seat back so I always have this handy too and then one of the door controllers will be my headrest for this Let's get this put away. Helps to have it a little bit close to the center of gravity, but it doesn't be perfect. All right, uh, let's see, is that all plugged in? That should be physics sensors electrified. All right, we need um, steering wheels, so we want Steering and steering on those. And that should be seat. All right, so let's go test this out. We'll see how it steers. And we'll tweak it. All right, so you see how slow the wheels are moving now. This is something people are talking about with the steering sewage to curl. Again, this number we can make 500 if we wanted. And that's going to be way too high. So see it like it stays. So I let go of the keyboard. It stays. Because the p-value is so high, it overshot by so much. If I press, see now it's going crazy. All right. So there's a balance you need to derive here. So like... It's 0.25 in the tutorial. That's pretty damn slow. So one thing you do is start to increase it is go in here to your AD and increase your uh, steering sensitivity. So let's say we go up to 20% on that. Now try. So you want to both tweak your steering sensitivity on the seat and the P-value. All right, so we're going to start. All right, so see, now I'm holding all the way over to D and the wheels are not going to 100% to the right. Okay, so that's telling me my p-value is too low. It is never gonna reach the set steering angle. So that tells me right there I need to tweak the p-value. All right, so we wanna increase the p-value. All right, so the steering sensitivity is, is saying, hey, I want full right right away. And then this, because the p-value is too low, it's never reaching it. So let's try 0.75. That's usually the higher end of what I use. All right. So let's start it. And so now you can see we can reach full steering lock because that's enough. All right. Now you have to watch for uh, for oscillation. So, so if you start getting a wobble, you want to decrease the p-value. So see how quickly I can change direction? So that is mostly your seat's uh, steering sensitivity is how quick it responds to that. All right, now the wobble and the oscillation are gonna be a p-value. If you're never reaching like what you're telling the steering wheel to do, if you say, I want one and it never gets to one, it means your p-value is too low. You only really need to get your p-value up high enough so that it's gonna reach what you want. Um, and you don't want it oscillating. If you start getting a wobble, your p-value is too high, you want to decrease your p-value. 
And then if you still want more steering um, responsiveness, uh, you then want to, you know, you want to decrease that p-value so the wobble goes away, but then you want to just increase the sensitivity on your seat because that's essentially what it's doing is it's telling the pit, hey, I want one now, the higher the sensitivity. If it's low, it's going to go, hey, I want 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. If the p-value is very high, it's going to give you that, but it's going to overshoot. And so it's going to say, oh, he wants 0.1. It gives you 5 million. Well, that doesn't help you. That's why the wheel was flicking back and forth real quick because P-value is too high. So now this behaves pretty well. Probably too much sensitivity. You can see how I can quickly change direction almost instantly. So maybe go down to like 15% on the um, steering. We're not going fast enough. Let's get going fast. The other thing you want to check is get going fast and see if you start getting an oscillation when you change direction. That means the p-value is overshooting what it needs to. So quickly give it some oscillation, see if it stabilizes. So I know that 0.75 is one of my normal numbers I run in my smaller cars, so it's working. If I put too high of a number, let's say I put seven, it's gonna, the wheels are gonna wobble back and forth, 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 and then it will finally smooth out. So you wanna just, that's how you tweak that to be where it needs to be. So now I'm stalling because I have not downshifted. Now I downshift, I'm not stalling anymore. Oh, hit the bumper on something. That's the first bumper hit. So what I can do is put some wedges in those bumper where you can't see, and that will help uh, drop the collision. We have no brakes at the moment, so. I do have a parking brake. All right, so that's tuned in pretty well. I would knock it down just a little bit. It's not a race car, so let's go down by five. All right, so that's probably pretty good there. Uh, let's put a quick linear on there. I'm sure we're going fast enough. All right, first gear, let's see what we top out at. So that's about oh, 18, 19 miles an hour. All right, there's about 35-ish miles an hour. All right, so there's about 60-something, maybe a little less. Here's fifth gear. All right, that's probably around, um, that's more 60-something. And here is uh, fifth. All right, there we're doing about 80 miles an hour. So that's a good range for us. You can see with the steering stability, to, um, the steering stability uh, microcontroller in there, you can see we can drift nicely. We're not spinning out all the time. Keep a nice drift because it's doing it by angular momentum. It's not doing it by like whatever I put in there. It's automatically bringing the wheel back to make sure that I don't spin out. So good for stability. Like see, if, if this was, if I was able to change direction too fast, I could decrease the sensitivity of my seat. Like, see, it took a little while before I could upset it there. So it worked pretty well. Now, it's not balanced either. Um, it's weight balanced yet either. But working pretty well here without any other bullshit going on. So start, start off pretty healthy, and then we should be easy to fix it. All right, good. All right, so transmission that, that's the main things we needed in there. That's kind of done. All right, let's see. Um, I'm thinking, do I want a key on this sucker? No, not really. Let's not worry about a key. Let's... All right, let's do doors. No, don't exit OBS. Stop. Cursor, my my um, DPI is too high. I'm missing shit that I'm heading off into another screen and hitting buttons I don't mean to be hitting. All right, let's go ahead. We'll do a little paint while we're here. All right, what else do we need in here? Um, ba -ba -ba -da. Come on, dude. I'm 
Russian, and that's screwing me up even more. Speed. Uh, which? Let's do it this way. Speed tack. Info. Tack info. Love box. Okay. Then I can footwell some of this, but not all of it. Um, that's kind of a pain. I can almost get a footwell all the way in the way I'd want to, but I can't, so that's kind of annoying. But um, yeah, I can't get it in there with the way that is, so that's fine. Do no footwell on that. Battery can be just snuggied later. We'll do that later. But drives pretty well for, uh, you, you look, the center of gravity just is kind of naturally about 50-50 between the wheels. A little bit front biased, which is nice. If we look, we have one, two, three, six, seven, eight, eight. So we're talking uh, four right here. It's about the middle of the four block. And um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's right. Okay, right here. All right, right there is the center of gravity. So we want it a little bit uh, just ahead of this of the center of the wheelbase. That way um, it doesn't want to spin out. I've talked before about here. Let's quickly do it. So if you have stability problems, I keep seeing people have this and they blame the game. Again, you're the engineer here. The tools are all there for you to do it. You can see your peers are making good builds that are not having problems. It's not the game's fault. Okay. So like with center of gravity is way too far back on this. So now not only are the steer wheels up, which is never good, but the because the center of gravity is far aft, if we try to turn, the back of the car wants to be in front. All right, center of gravity, wherever the heaviest part is, wants to go, has the most momentum, it wants to go forward. So as you can see, it's a piece of cake to make a spinny, spinny dealy here because the center of gravity is way in the, is way in the rear. And so the rear of that vehicle wants to be up front because it is the heaviest part. That's why hauling an overloaded trailer is so dangerous. That trailer wants to go in front, right? So that that's a really accentuated rear CG. All right, so now do the opposite. It's like when you see people post that, uh, oh, you can't make good cars in Stormworks. You can make good cars in Stormworks. You just got to be reasonable with your, uh, with your, you know, design. So, again, here's the opposite. So now we have a lot of weight in the front. I got to be careful because they'll hit the ground. But the front of this car always wants to stay forward now because it's so much extra weight in there. And so we have w really wicked understeer. It's harder for me to get this car to turn now. But, like, the front of the car wants to stay in front. So it should be harder to spin out. Now i got to worry about hitting these on the, on the ground. So that could play, in a, play a part in some of this. But now, like, here's me trying to spin out. Watch, I can't even turn. Because the center of gravity is so far forward. Look how big my turn is. So that's a huge understeer problem. So, like, when you hear people talk oversteer, understeer. Oversteer is the ass of the car wants to come around. Understeer was the front does not want to move. All right, so like the way we had it is already set up pretty good. Again, right here is center of gravity, right in this line. Or this is the center of the wheelbase. Let's put it that way. This line, center wheelbase. We want the CG just slightly forward of that. And then, again, you get a car that does not want to spin out. It wants to go forward. It wants to behave itself. It's going to act really nicely. So like you see here, I'm already able to steer much better because I don't have massive understeer because I'm not trying to heft that weight around the front. We can get going fast here. And because of that, I can make my turns nice and precisely. Yeah, we come in here, I'll get up to speed and we'll try doing some spinning. You can see how much smaller the, the turning circle is gonna be. See how much small the turning circle is and I can actually turn around, change directions now because the, um, you know, the center of gravity is about in the middle. So pretty basic physics stuff that, again, you know, sometimes the game gets blamed for. 
because you know you look at somebody's build and they just their center of gravity is way out of whack and you know automotive engineers have to think about this the whole time you know race cars it's really important okay right, let's catch up with some chat here I get you. Yeah, you kind of reduce the best you go. How's it going there? Oh, hello, hello. Nope, you're not too late. Nope, uh, it's still some work on this. The plan is to get it done. Yeah, you know, some of the future uh, editions of this, I will end up, uh, like, if it's going to be a real complicated build, it might take a couple episodes, but this one should be done pretty soon. Fat pipes, yeah. Big old fat pipes. All right, good, good, good. So that is good. So, like, if you wanted to accentuate this even more. So, for example, let's say this bitch was tipping over all the time. We talked about this in the patney, okay? This is tipping over all the time. Uh, you can lower your CG. So let's watch what the CG does. So this is going to pull it forward, which is going to give us understeer. We know we're not going to be able to steer as well now. It pulled the it pulled that brick pretty far forward, but let's look. It also pulled it down. So if you're having roll issues, the best place to put it for roll issues would be right here. But we have stuff in the way, right? So you could do some things, add a couple of weight blocks in there. But um, if we do that, if th that's actually not too too bad, we're probably still good like this. So let's look at it. So if we look at how high the CG is, it's about two blocks up there. It's right almost on this block. And again, we want that. That that block in front of this center line of our um, of our wheelbase, we put these here like this. I can't fit both there. Never mind. I thought I was going to be able to get two in there. I can't. So uh, we could put them somewhere. Like we don't need them. I don't need them. The car behaves itself. But like say we put them here. Okay. So we have two there. It dragged it both forward and it dragged it down. So we know because it went forward that we're going to get a car that more likely understeers now. Uh, it's going to be less likely to spin around, and it's going to be less likely to roll. So all these things. But watch what happens when I go over the hill. If you notice, the truck's been landing pretty flat when we go over this hill. Now it's going to nosedive. All right. So all these things are things you want to keep in mind when you're building a car in game, or you know, a vehicle in game. Is you know, you start getting these behaviors where the nose drops. That's why like. A lot of the Hollywood jump scenes are such are so nonsense is because the car has enough uh, forward CG that it would end up nose diving, you know. So you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do that, and so they have to actually do like trick cars. So one thing to add here too is again this whole vehicle weighs 427. It's super light. So one thing I add here is put some fins in. And I make them like that, and so they go in the front like that, and so they're about one, two blocks ahead of the wheels, okay? And then two blocks behind the wheels, right? We can add a couple more fins. And those are also going to go down, and that's going to help um, help to pull this car to the ground, so even in windy conditions. So what we'll do is uh, that will add lift. Let's go test it real quick out some wind without fins. Again, this is the other thing, you know, again, I I see the post, people will say, you know, you can't build good cars in Stormworks, uh, which is a bunch of bullshit, but, um, all right, so we've already tested it with no wind, so let's just run some wind. All right, so there we go, we're already flying here, right? So we don't want that, right? That's... Oh my god, Stormworks physics, oh my god, it needs new physics, oh my god, oh death, you know, oh, it's, it's unplayable, it's a mess, right, bullshit, All right, it's a mess because we didn't engineer it correctly, let's go fix it and engineer it correctly again, just crying about it's not going to help, you got to just, you know, you have the tools, you have all these tools, you can make airplanes, you can make, you can make airplanes, you can make a car that does not fly, All right, so those are now like that, that is now like that, one place I like, often we'll hook this into is the uh, transmission because the or the clutch the clutch will go to one when you're driving 
Easier thing to do is just do a constant number. Just make it a one. So make those go full down. Now, theoretically, it's good if you are reversing if they go backwards, but generally you don't reverse that fast. And also the wind uh, would have to be way up for your reverse to have it lift you up. It could do it, but for the most part, that's why my van, the ass picked up was at really strong wind. The fins were at 100%, you know. So uh, you could base it off your speed, stuff like that. But generally for 90% of the time, at least, uh, just a positive one pulling you to the ground is all you need. So let's go ahead and test it now. Wind's up again. Like you see the wind blowing the car. I know, not, not very PG. All right, so now those uh, fins are... Oh, I didn't hook in the electricity. So they are going to lift us. Electricity. Forgot I don't have infant electric on, so... All right, now let's try it. So now those are pushing down. It's helping to push us to the ground, which is going to give us a much more... It's going to essentially simulate the weight that the car would have, you know. The cars are super underweighted, and if you weight them up realistically, they're going to probably be, art, you know, artificially slow. Let's see if that's enough. 100% wind's pretty gnarly. Let's check the fins. I can't see. Let's check the fins. We plugged into electricity. We are. Okay, let's make sure they're all plugged in. They are. We might just have so much surface area on us. Let's check them real quick, and then we will go. I might not be able to get under here to see them. Um, I think I might be able to get under here. Where are we at? There's fin. Trying to see the suckers here so I can read them. Trying to read it. Jesus Christ, can't get in there enough to read it. All right, let me fix this. Yeah, the other thing, too, is 100% wind is hurricane. So that's the other thing to keep in mind as well. Make sure those are going the right direction. Those are ups, those are ups. Yep, yep, yep. Two spots here. Let's put in a couple more. They should theoretically put more back there, but we we'll probably go without. Let's um, try hooking them in. You know, 100% too is a little bit extreme because it's going to, uh, you know, it's way over what's realistic. You know, that's a hurricane, and real cars will tip over in a hurricane, so we'll keep that in mind as well. Can I see the fins? Uh, I can't see them. They gotta be running at ones at this point. I'm just trying to test it out to check them, but. I'm trying to see if I can. Yep, so you can see the backs are tilting down. I'm trying to show them. Backs tilting down, the fronts are tilting down now. Alright. So, see, as we take a jump there, we come straight down. 100% wind is kind of hurricane anyways. Let's go to 50. It's more reasonable. And then the other thing you can do is weight down your car. But the fins definitely do help. You know, you can do active aero as well, which only, you know, they're pig controlled. But most of the time you don't need it. Most of the time you just want downforce. You know, going sideways to 100% wind is tough anyways. You're going to try to blow the truck over the whole time. Like now you see we can take a little bit of air and we come straight down. It's not like a big uh, crash. There we go. You see, nice and natural. It feels pretty natural now. So the tools are all there to kind of make it work in the different conditions. Because we have the two sets of fins, notice the front comes down a little faster now. You know, so you got to keep that in mind as well. So that's why I tend to try to get them to be equispaced equidistant and not be uh, you know doubled up in one area but that works better now here I'll probably just go to the one set because I know one set works up to a, you know a pretty good amount of wind once you get a hundred percent wind you're pretty much the game is is putting you in a hurricane and whether you choose to go out in the hurricane or not it's your own business so <clears throat> All right. 
So that's, that's pretty much stability stuff kind of out of the way. Let's get rid of the second set. We don't really need them, I don't think. This will give us a flatter trajectory. So one thing I could do to make the, um, let's do this real quick. So the bumper, to make the bumper less sticky so we don't catch all the time, let's go ahead and do this. So likely you'll never see that, but this has a smaller collision. So likely as we come down, it's less likely we hit our bumper. Now we're gonna hit the corners of this but it's less likely we'll get hung up. Right, let me look at the interior of this build. Let's see where, um, so kind of it's a uh, pretty darkish gray. It's like it's very monochromatic the whole way through. So I'm gonna do a little bit less monochromatic. Might brighten this up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's very monochromatic, so I'm not going to do that monochromatic. I'm going to end up, just looks weird in game, being that monochromatic, which IRL, it's fine, because there's texturing on the different materials and everything else, and we don't really get that, so. so I'm just browning up the seats, give a little bit of uh, differentiation. Here we go. A little bit brighter on the walls of it. It's all plastic dash and everything in these. Again, they're supposed to be budget, you know, for work essentially. So you don't need them to be super fancy dancy. Uh, this, that's can be body color. Test, make sure I can't go through the roof anymore. That was quite annoying. Be able to st stand up and go through the roof. Yeah, it's a little, yeah, so you can still make it through the roof there. No, uh, there's not much you can do about that. If I want a one by three in there. See if I can block and put a one by two in there. Really would rather not go through the roof. Okay, that works. I just don't want to like, if you look up into a block, you can see through the block and I don't want that. That's that immersion breaking looking outside. So that works for me. And then we'll just go a little bit lighter on the ceiling here. So let's go up. Okay. It's very monochromatic, so I'm kind of trying to fight the monochromatic nature of it a little bit, but not too bad, you know. Give it a little bit of uh, variation there between the layers. All right, so let's go ahead and save that real quick, and we'll grab the windshield off the Pacti, I think. It's, it's the same as this. Let's see. Oh, not the Pacti, the um, Patni.
I have to change out here. I have to change out a bunch. So let's grab that. Let's grab a bunch of shit here, and then I'll... Oh, come on, man. These arrows are always the worst. These draggers. That's pretty much everything. I'm going to grab all that. Let's do... Um, cut that. Let's put that as a new part. Save that. Let's actually... Yeah, let's save it as it is. XML in shield set one. Let's see if we want all of this or if we want just parts of it. That is too tall. I've got this as a two banger. Uh, this is a two banger. Shit. I've got this as a short roof. That's not good. Oh, I forgot. Even's tough. Even's going to be ugly as hell to do. not going to be easy to do. I think that even shows in the middle. I did it. Paste the fuck down. There we go. Yeah, if that wasn't going to show in Shimmer, I would leave it, but that's going to show in Shimmer. So... What I could do... Ah, uh, crap. You know what? Damn it. I want that XML shit back in. Um, here, let's see. Try this. Get a... I need a helper block in here. Pain in the ass to get this to merge up, too. I think what I could do to get this. So I, I don't want to come through the ceiling. I want to do one by threes again, I think. And what I'll do is I'll go like this. And I'll go like this. And then I want the one by threes. Should be able to get that windshield in. Because it will go through that half block and it won't show. Okay. Okay. They're kind of like the, I like the big posts on this one, a little bit different. Let's get a helper block on this. Eventually you find it. Always a pain in the ass to get this find this one.
Oh, they're always suck to find. That's why I gotta wanna put a helper block on it early. Just wanna first look before I dick with it, I wanna make sure it fits. Make sure I don't get a shimmer off of it. So you see it doesn't show in there, like it could go down into the dash. And go like that, but that sticks out, so I don't like that. Check the shimmer. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to do it until I can hear it. Mm, we have a bitch to do. Might be able to flip it. Let's see if I can flip it. Trying to check on shimmer. I, I have no tolerance for shimmer. It drives me nuts. It's not a bad windshield. I'm just trying to figure out. All right, I'm gonna just grab its dimensions here. So let's go ahead and I'll put a put a block in. Regular one by one? I think it's a regular one by one, right? I think it's this way. Okay. Alright. Let's bind it. Check chat here in a second. I go play a little Pavlov. We'll see you later, Erasmus. Thanks for hanging out. Which clip is this? Yeah, I don't. That's fine if you flip it. Yeah, American ground clearance. Yeah. Again, remind you guys, thank you. I appreciate everybody for hanging out on Twitch. Uh, I got affiliate today. Finally got the average up, so that was good. I appreciate everybody helping me out with that. Uh, if you do have an Amazon Prime subscription and you're not subscribed to anybody, you can uh, you can use that. You can give it to somebody on Twitch, and you get one month's uh, subscription on that if you want uh, to a specific one person, and that way uh, you don't have to watch ads. So. If you are watching ads on YouTube and you want to go over to Twitch and use your Prime subscription, then I get a little bit of money for that, and you guys don't have to watch ads. So you don't have to, but if you want to, that is available. I'm just getting rid of all this crap I have here because I end up like accidentally editing something from before. Okay. Alright, so I need to find this window. beefed out here. It's, there's window three by two. Nope. Window one by one right here. Okay. And then I'm looking for the next window one by one. I think it's a one by one. I'm hoping. Fuck. I hate it how it does that. Like, it literally just dragged my cursor like three lines away. It's like, come on, dude. Stop doing that. Right, window one by one. It's the same one. Nope, here it is. Okay, right here. So this is the one that's already installed. So I'm just going to copy that code there. Now I want to find the next window one by one. Just here, you notice the code's different. So I'm going to drag that code, paste it, save it. All right, now we should be able to open it. All right, now this window is the same as that window. I can get rid of this one. All right, the difference being that this one now is, um, it has the, um, 
it has our buddy in the middle. So now the helper blocks. Sometimes you want to put helper blocks on there like this. It is a help. Um, and then what happens when you paste this, now my issues of joining this are gone because I just use those helper blocks like that. And then I can join it. So Sometimes you want to leave your helper blocks in there. It makes sense. But usually you can add them, up, add them on really quickly if you need to. See that shimmer? Can't do it. Can't do it. Uh, shimmer annoys me too much. Um, see what we can do. We might have to make some custom glass um, on that. The problem is, again, you, um, you get... If you take a one block and you make it two, it goes 50% on each side. So evens are tough. Evens are a pain in the ass to do. And I can't I can't handle the shimmer. Shimmer just completely ruins it for me. Like, I could go black roof is the only thing I could do. Like, match the color on the roof. So, like, if I wanted to go... Let me see what I could do here. I gotta find this block to do it. But there we go. Like that, if I can match the color out... We'll see, but I... Oh, shit. I'm doing stuff I shouldn't be doing. Let's test it now. I think the shimmer is still going to be there and annoy me. Nope, it's gone. Okay, good. So by painting the edges white, I'm able to get rid of that shimmer. So shimmer's gone. We're happy now. So that's good. So uh, it does put the inside of this as body color, but uh, not the end of the world. I could flip it, theoretically. Let's try to flip it, see if that's better or worse. That one sticks out. Let's just leave it. It's not the end of the world, and I think it is, um, you know, the windshield works. It's not perfect. Uh, it's going to have that uh, interior color. Uh, you know, it's going to have that body color on there, but I'm not, it um, doesn't upset me. So, like that. So, you know, that tiny little, like, again, you have to make sacrifice. You have to make, um, you know, decisions on what you want to do. And sometimes, like, never going to be perfect. So a little shimmer there, but, uh, you know, the black and, and white contrast was too much. Now you can't see the shimmer anymore. It's there, but you just can't see it because it's the same color. So that worked out pretty well, I think. All right, good. I'm happy with that. That doesn't bother me. All right, good. So let's go ahead and grab some door micros. And I want the one with the button on them. And let's get two. And we want the toggle. We want there. We want the toggle. And we want there. All right, let me fix these. So these should be... Yep, these are good. Perfect. All right, so this one becomes the headrest for the seat. Faster seat. Okay, and then the back of this will go to the brown there. Okay. And then this one's easy to hide anywhere. I can put it right here even. But uh, we'll leave that there for now. What happened to my battery? Did I delete my battery? I must have. All right, so let's go ahead and move this up. I want to start getting towards finishing this. Let's go ahead and bring in the patney. That has all the lighting on it that I want. So the patney is artificially tall. I can see how much like the cab height is taller. So that like is overly tall, but um, proportionally it looks pr it looks pretty reasonable. It you know would benefit from coming down one, uh, but I just I don't have the space, you know. So I kind of when I built this one I did it so that it had a, had the space if it could. All right, let's go grab this through there. We want to cut these. Those are the directionals. And we want probably, let's see. Let's just go white for now. I 
Again, all praise that the control S problem is gone. So it's fun. I saw somebody like, I like the control S. <laughs> uh, you're the only one. No, I get it. You know, people like different things, but it's like, personally for me, I like, I've never liked hot commands. Like, people are like, oh, just press control Z. You'll go back. It's like, there's certain things I do that in. There's a lot of things I don't. It's like, you can get, easily get in the habit of accidentally pressing it when you don't want to, and it's a big pain in the ass. Like, I'd rather just make the decision to delete something on my own than do any sort of hot keys. Especially with deleting. Do not want to delete stuff that I don't want to delete, you know? Gets the, gets pretty uh, hairy if you're accidentally deleting stuff you intend to keep. Trying to think how to do this bumper. Um, this gets ruined if I screw with it there. I think I want to do this bumper here. I could just put it in under here. as I start cutting into lights if I taper the bumper too much like that. Work on this taper here. I'm not thrilled with it at the moment. I want the bumper up, like a little bit higher in the back. Tailgate. Let's see. Where's the tailgate? All right. So the tailgate. So yeah, the bumper would want to go here. I'm thinking... like that and then let's work this okay we'll just that that's fine we'll just uh we'll add to the length a little bit that's fine and then this is not gonna go like that anymore um that can look funky if i do this yeah Decide how I want to get that angle where I want it. Trying to kind of stay true to how it is, though, so it's like it has its own little like angles here. Ugh, that's kind of annoying. There we go. Let's try something here. See how important that angle is on it. No, nah, it's pretty. It actually flattens out pretty reasonably there. Yeah, it's almost like a one by two. See if I can't get this kind of flattened out a little bit. What are we gonna do here? Almost like that. I think is more akin to how it is. I don't like too much clipping, but it's like it. Um, it's tough to get it tight. Fuck. It's tough to get it tight in a wheel well.
That's pretty good. I like that. All right, that works well with this bumper in the back here. Okay, that works out all right. So that means this can all come, hopefully. Let's see how much space I have. Cutting instead of copying, that way it um, transfers. I could just do a square on there. Let's do a square bumper on there. I'm trying to see if an inset bumper looks all right. Let's ins. Uh, how? On what fucking planet does that not do what I just asked it to do? Right, apparently that doesn't do it. Oops. Oh my god, just go where I want you to. Oh my god, this is a process here. This is a process. Now the reason I'm cutting instead of copying is I want all the connections to remain. That would be, oh yeah, that's why it's, it's not in lane the bumper. I thought I'd press this before. Let's try in lane the bumper. It looks like I'm looking at the real bumper and there's like, there's no visible bumper. It's like a flat, it's hard to get. Yeah, like I'll bring up the pictures. It's completely a flat bumper. So that's what I'm gonna go with here. I'll probably change some stuff, but like that's what we're looking at here. As you can see, flat bumper. Yeah, so I'll go flat bumper on that, and then like the one by twos, piss off there. Okay, there we go. Um, ads keep popping up. There we go. All right. So we'll we'll uh flat the bumper up. And then I need a little color contrast, so I'll probably keep the bumper dark like that. Out of annoyance, I just closed all that. Now I'm just checking pictures again here. Back bumper. Lighting's a little bit off, but I kind of I need to do what I need to do to get the it all to connect and hook up and everything else. Yeah, it's running a completely white bumper. It's pretty. Pretty monochromatic. I'll make a design choice and make that a little bit of a color. Because it's, uh, it's too much. There we go. A little bit of something there. That's completely flat, so... Let's see, I need the lighting panel now. So let's see what else we have in here for lighting. How did all the lighting get disconnected on that? Shit. Why is the lighting all disconnected? Come on, man. How did all my lights get? All the lights got disconnected. Did I delete the lighting? Oh, there it is. Okay, it's in there. The lighting's a big ass microcontroller too, because it's complicated lighting to do brakes and high beams and everything else, so it gets pretty complex. Just plugging it manually. All right, uh, left directional rear. Uh, what do I have it as the outsides? Okay. That's right uh, directional rear. This is brake lights, or these two inboards. Uh, reverse, whatever my reverse gear is, which is three, goes to, I believe it is this one, for reverse light. Okay, what do we have for a panel in here? I might just put that panel right in. I might just run this panel right in from the patney. Take, let's do that. This one has all the information. This will save me a bunch of time. That's what I'll do. All right, that will come out. 
right, let's reconnect a bunch of this. This is going panels. Okay, good. So the panels can come over. What else we have there? Just the panels. Okay, good. I should, probably should have started with the patenty stuff anyway from the beginning, but it's not the end of the world. And then I, how did I do this back here? Let's see. All right, I have them cozied right up on the steering wheel. Let's actually undo that. Uh, let's just grab it. Let's see if I cozy that right up there. Instead of a gap. I usually put a gap in there and I'll try. Okay, why is this one bitching at me and the other one wasn't? No, I had it. it it's, it's got a space in there. And then I, a dial can't go there because the um, the seat. The dial shouldn't. Nope, dial can. Beautiful. Dial's going in there. There we go. All right, that's going to help a lot to speed things up. Let's go. This is headlight tilt. Okay, that is seat panel. Let's grab the whole seat out of here. Should have done this from the beginning, but um, that one's connected to the seat. That would have been easy to grab, too. It wouldn't have lined up right anyway because of the seats. I could flip it, but. All right. Yeah, I should have started with more patenty stuff from the beginning. Um, let's see. Pat needs a four cylinder too. That's RPS. That is air manifold. Fuel manifold. Remember what the hell it is, but it'll be good in shape. There we go. Uh, variable brakes. This already has the braking in there, so I don't want to go into braking, so that helps too. There's RPS. We have alternator. We have clutch. Starter. That battery. I don't have a battery, so we're just going to drag this one out of here. It's already connected. That should be good. And the seat needs to hook up to seat there. And this should be able to go. Okay, your lights. Anything else I want or need out of here? I don't think so. Famous last words, but let's see. We have everything else we need. Now I'll just accelerate so I don't have to redo the panels or rethink about how I want the panels to be. They're already done. All right. Uh, 
going to start spanking away some of these panels into where they're going. Don't think there's anything that's worrying about here. Nope, we're good there. Nice thing about a pickup truck too is a lot of space for micros. Okay. Don't want uh, super white. Let's try. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay. That's mainly just to get the color underneath all fixed up. So there's the deepest, darkest black so that anything underneath is not shining and like see it poking out in a crack or something. I don't think it screwed up anything I didn't need. Yep, that white's better, it's less shiny. Bumper looks all right. Okay, what do we have here? That's speed, RPM, engine, so I might put something else here and put speed here. Move this battery. micro can just go in the back now it's fine and I want to do the hood so I need one more for the hood Let's see where we at here. right there if I can fit it there right there okay the hood and gap right there we have a gap okay what happened there what is this what is this sitting here 
Bunch of blocks here for no freaking reason. Yeah, we did. Okay. The door panel for this one here can be copied. All right. Okay, that is fixed. I need speedo, so these should be all. Let's quickly just check out the gauges here, see how we're looking. Uh, electricity, I, don't, I must have had a relay in there somewhere. Let's see what we're running off this new one here. So that's starter, okay. What was I running for? So I think, let's see, where's headlights? Um, headlights right here. And then we want headlights due to the back lights on the gauges. What, never mind, what the fuck is that? Nope, it's already hooked up to the two of those. Okay, no, it doesn't. What is doing the back light on this? I'm trying to figure out. Oh, occupied on the seat. I don't want to occupy the seat. I want to, if I turn the headlights on. Okay. Those are all good. Where's this starter headlights? Uh, I'm curious what I was doing on the. Let's see, five off the seat. Where's five? Five is going to be the park brake. Okay. What else do we need here? Getting there. We're getting there. Um, I want to see what the hell's going on with. Uh, these dials and everything. Let's keep forgetting the fucking power. Um, let's save it real quick. I want to see how the patney does its um, circuit breaker. Let me make sure I'm bringing that in with this. Forget how it does its circuit breaker, so I gotta look. Because I don't have to rewrite the panel, so let's see. Electricity. We have breaker. What is running it? Right here. Okay, here is here's a circuit breaker. Now where is it being attached to? Okay, six. All right, six. All right. So we get a relay. in the hood. Yeah, I think I do. Okay, so let's hook up the electricity. All right, so where's our battery? Battery, battery is going right to there. That's going to be the hot side. So let's do our lighting. And we will do our doors. Now let's do it system by system here. Let's not cheat. Let's go there. Carry these through onto here. That's fine. Okay, so that is all going to the hot bus. So lighting's usually hot bust. The fins are gonna be. Uh, let's do them. Not hot bus. What are you? That's. Skip that. That goes there like that. Okay. That is good. All right, doors are going to go to there, and then it's going to join up to there and there, and then we also want here and here. Those are going on the hot bus. So we can open our doors right off the bat. Uh, we want these are our three dials now. Those are going to the cold side. These are going to the cold side, and these will, those are already hooked into the transmission. This is going to the cold side for the physics sensor. 
think that's pretty much it. Uh, that's pretty much good. And then we want six on the seat, which is where six on the seat is going to go to here. All right, let's give it a give it a whirl. All right, so we have paint behind the doors. Let's do that now, actually. Worry about control s anymore yay thank you much devs appreciate that it's perfect for a lot while there okay all right so engine temp's good rpm's good volts are good that is good speedo i need to hook in we have a dual speedo i'm going to change that to something else Gear. This is not th okay. That's why that was set up the way it was. Um, until I put on my headlights, that doesn't come on. So I think I will keep those as occupied. Good. And I can see into the engine bay, but I can't do anything about that, so I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, that's good. And then we'll put in a speedo controller for the speedometer, and I'll just figure out what I want to put there. So let's go ahead and start it up. Okay. I might put a parking brake light on that. That's what I'll do. Something's up where it's not controlling the shifter. Electricity should be good on that. Yeah, we started, so that's good. Let's check the seat. Yep, that's good. Let's see what happened there. Why are you not behaving yourself, this son? That's running the engine, so that's definitely not a problem. All right, yeah, let's check it. Make sure that the freak's not screwed up. Yeah, four, that should be it. So why are we not shifting gears? Uh, okay, something up with the um, park brake. Let's see if it's park brake. Park brake potentially overriding it. So. I just shifted, it's not showing it, so I need to grab the readout. That. Clutch not hooked up? Let's see. Clutch is hooked up. Let's see why you're not behaving yourself here, guy. That all starts up. We can rev. Let's see why it's not going here. So, what's the clutch doing here? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Let's see. 3.5 clutch, zero threes and a quarter. If that's over, that's fine. And I'm tagging on the shifter info, and the shifter info it should be also doing. Let's see. Let's see where the readout is for the gearing. That's high temp warning. Let me read it. All right, let's. We gotta find it. That's what I was hoping this was just going to plug and play, but I have an issues here. So that is six. What I could do is set that to always on. That's what I'll do. And then I'll do headlights. Like that. 
Okay, let's go back to what I was actually trying to do here. Uh, let's see, so six. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, right here. 26, okay, that is coming down off this. This probably didn't get hooked in. 20, 26, is that what I'm reading it? 26, 26, okay. that reads and then with that that's 25 this should be reading a number to 26 That not on now. Oh, uh, because the uh, light won't come on until I start anyway. That's good. Okay. So something is stopping it from going into gear. You can hear it clicking too. I don't know what the fuck is going on here. Let me check. What did I screw up here? Um, let's see. Transmission I am. Okay, here we go. We have five is the park brake. Let's see. So the park brake's not on. This park breaker if I hold down for three seconds. And then why the hell is this not reading out right? So that is, make sure it's reporting correctly again. Reporting on, that's why, right there. Okay, 20, 26. I never changed the channel over. Okay, good. We're getting into mush brain here. All right, there we go. Why is the clutch not going is the question I have. Oh, we're having a clutch problem. Why the hell are we having a clutch problem? Let's look at the clutch. All right, so clutch conditions. If the WS is greater than zero and the RPS is greater than 3.5, go ahead and increase the clutch. All right, that makes sense. Uh, if the clutch zero, if it's less than that, zero out the clutch. Also, if I want, let's see, um, let's do five, where's five? So let's grab this. If uh, we put on the park brake, we'll uh, also neutralize the clutch there. So this park brake's also gonna zero it out to uh, put us in neutral and that will just also make sure that it uh, zeroes the clutch. That's right, so that's in there, but I'm trying to figure out why the hell that's not going at all. So let's see, make sure I hook this up correctly. There's clutch right there. Make sure I, I might've cut a pipe somewhere, so it might actually not be getting the motion. Let's see, clutch, let's check it real quick. I'll check chat in a second. I'm just trying to fish out this problem right here, probably. Yeah, it got screwed up. Okay, that's what it is. It's right there, um, I believe is right here, right here, okay. All right, changed out the dash. That's what it did. Why did you flick me away the hell over there, camera? I didn't even move my mouse. That's what did it. Okay. <laughs> give me paint. Give me paint, give me paint. Here we go, all right. Transmission actually has to be hooked up. How did my fucking steering get all? Oh, this the seat. I have to reconnect that to the seat. Now, what did I have on here? I think I had like 15, AD, 15. Yeah. I think I'll change those doors. They don't open 90, they open. A little bit less than that.
So we're doing 120 miles an hour here, so that is too high. We don't want it to go that fast. Let me read some chat real quick here. Yeah, I don't want to get too sweaty VR. VR can, uh, it's amazing how fast I can sweat you up. It doesn't have to necessarily be one stream. Like, I don't want to, I'm trying to keep it as much as I can to one stream, but like, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. I'll do a couple streams and get it out. But that's the goal is I want it, I want it done and on the workshop, you know? And so I'm going to lean towards simpler builds. That way they get done, you know? That needs to be the corner there needs to be painted. There's the friggin' mouse. There it is. All right. Yeah, but that's the goal. Um, so that's right here is the problem. Child right there. Okay. This is needs to be white. Ah, uh, ooh, that looks funky. Let's go like that. That's better. Okay. Yeah, if something big, I'll, like, I'll make it take a little more time, but i um, generally trying to keep it there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go change this one here. So this is going to be Speedo there. Um, it's going to be Park Brake. That's going to be a Indicator Light. Five. Right. And then where are we going here? We have five somewhere here. Five right there. Okay. So if park brakes on that will just um, show us the park the light for the park brake. Right, and then speedo. Uh, let's see if I have any open space on anything. But I might. Oh, I think I do here on the steering stability controller. It should have an open space now. Beautiful. That's reading the physics sensor. So this should be able to read out speedo. Uh, what's, I assume Japan uses kilometers per hour, right? Um, let's see. I would say that, yeah, they run kilometers an hour. So that'll be, um, come on, come on, come on. When I type, you type. Very frustrating you don't do that. sensor right there. All right, good. I was going to grab the wrong one. There's Speedo done. I need to re-gear this a little bit, so it's not that challenging to do. Now, let's see.
All right, a couple ways I can do this. One, to down the speed. This is going up to 20. We can cut it to 15. Uh, we still have constant speed in these. I think I still think these are plugged in, right? The fins. Let me make sure they're. I don't know if I hook these fins up to electricity. That could be the problem. Nope, they're plugged. Okay, good. Come on, come on. Fucking Jesus. I have to drag a line every, twice every time. It's going to take me a million years. All right, so one thing I do is just that. I can drop the max RPS. That will drop our speed. Light comes on. Puts, puts us in neutral, as you can see. All right. Hold. Uh, okay, let's go up five. Let's hold it for three seconds. That works. All right. Um... A couple things you do. You re-gear it, uh, or you could do this. So, like, if I was going to have this tow a bunch of stuff, you know, if I want this to be really powerful, it's a four-cylinder. So I don't want it super powerful. I'd rather drop the, um, probably the RPS on it. So we're doing 109 kilometers an hour, which is 67 miles an hour. Let me see uh, if it has a top speed on there. I assume it, you know, with a with a 2.4 liter turbo i4 in the diesel, I'm assuming it's not all that fast. Again, you know, I don't know if it's coming in as a as a key car or not. I don't think it is. I think it's supposed to be full size. Let's see, I'm trying to read these. Um, I, I should be able to figure this out. Um, let's see. It's 3,400 RPM. Let's see what it has for tires on it. I can figure out the speed by that. Let's see if I have... 14-inch um, steel wheels. I don't know what the tires are on there. So let's see. Um... Let me see if I can search for tires. Nope, all right, let's see. Hilux, Champ, tires. Uh, Champ, nope, no, it's Champ tires. Tires for the Hilux, that's the big Hilux. Wish it would show me what the um, tires are gonna be. Let's see what the regular Hilux has. If it has 14-inch rims, we know it's the same. I uh, know it's got 16s. Shit. Let's see. Um, uh, I don't know what size these tires are going to be. Let's see. Uh, tire size... Or a 14 inch rim. So, what are we running on tire sizes? Let's pull a tire size, just run this one. So, these are, let's see. I'd say they're 115 inch. What happens? You start mixing metric and non-metric. It's kind of a pain in the ass. I think I'm just going to kind of guess on this. Let's go up a little bit on the uh, speed. Definitely don't want it flying when it's, um, like, literally flying when it's moving. So let's go up to, let's do 17. Let's see how we get going here. Um, 
You know what? Let's do this. Let's go back to 20 and let's down gear the bitch. Um, 20 and down gear. This will give it a little bit of oomph. All right, so if we look at my gearing, uh, this screws up reverse, but that's not the end of the world. Uh, you know, in a tractor, it's important to have the reverse. In like the big mining vehicles, it's important to have a really slow reverse. So this one is facing, um, that's actually up here in it, let's see. These are both down gears here. Let's see. Three, two, six, five. So right here, let's do this. Let's go up, up, and let's run this at 20 and see what the speeds are. So I've just down geared the uh, transmission. So that this will give us symmetrical reverse for the most part. It'll give us actually a little bit lower reverse, which is nice. So there's 38 kilometers an hour in first, second. Just check, I'm just checking the steering sensitivity is a little bit high for me. Oh yeah, we're gonna way overrun it now. So there's 100, 110 miles an hour, something like that. That's faster than I like, so let's keep down gearing it a little bit. I should have just kept it in kilometers an hour so I'd remember the numbers. The 38 was first gear. So we've trimmed off about four kilometers an hour there. See the thing too is uh, likely we're in, like we're at like a one to one in final gear, so that's going to be the same top speed. We're just giving us ourselves more grunt, lower in the lower end. All right, notice that if you guys watch real carefully, watch when I steer. See how it wiggles at the end? See that little wiggle? That means the p value is too high. The p value is too high on this now. So it's actually it's a little over uh, zealous for me. So that tells me that you know I wanted to. Uh, drop the steering sensitivity down anyway so instead of dropping the sensitivity I'll drop this. Let's go down to 6.5 so we can drop that p-value down now that we have a wiggle in there so yeah if you have a 1 to 1 for your um, yeah if you have a 1 to 1 for your uh, for your final Ratio, it's gonna, it's gonna be the same no matter what because it's essentially as though there's no transmission there. So can't knock down fifth gear, which is fine. That'll give us a good travel gear. Do have to worry about flipping over. I'm just playing with the steering here. So like that's the benefit of the steering stability controllers. Like I can really whip its ass around, and I can still recover it. See how like, and that makes it that makes it fun to, to use. Like it's fun to be able to use this and drift it. And that's why, like, you know, when people don't think you can make fun cars and game, you can make some fun-ass cars and game. You just, you, get, you have to do the same engineering things they do to make a car fun in real life. Like, they do a bunch of this stuff IRL to make car, cars fun. Like, you know, like I was telling my brother, like, you know, it's it's more fun to have a car with thin tires because you break traction. And it's fun to squeal the ass around. And, like, is it good for racing? No. You don't want to be breaking traction racing, but it's not a race car. It's a, like, yay, I... I drifted around this corner a little bit that makes a car fun you know it's um you know if you really want a fun driving experience just go get a motorcycle like a real person but um <laughs> you know if you actually want a race car like see it's, it's a little bit over steery there so i gotta be careful all right let's pull it back i want to check the weight and balance again the weight and balance seems a little bit off now so by adding all the stuff we added we could have dicked up the weight and balance a little bit um it's a little bit high it's not still not too bad. It's a little bit high. You see, I'm trying to see if I have any place I can just slam some weight in here. It's tough. I want to get it up front too. So let's see. I think I might. Let me see where it's. I'm trying to see where the footwell is. Yeah, I don't want to put them in the footwell. Let's 
this. Trying to find a place to put a block. Oh, these are still, I didn't paint these yet. Let me look at the design again. I want to see what I want to paint the front there. I might just, I'm going to go solids on these. They don't need to be painted. That's fine there. And then let's grab a couple, um, what do we, look, what is here? Okay, that's the, all right. So let's go ahead and grab some weight blocks. And let's bias a little bit forward and low. That should drag the weight forward quite a bit. So, so see it's dragging it both down and forward a little bit. That will give us a little bit more forward bias there. And then I think I think the p value is a little bit high on this still. So let's go to five five. Remember, I haven't gripped up the tires on this either, so it, it's still pretty damn good for having non-grip tires. Trying to do a test there, guys. Stop hitting shit. I hit the bumper as I came off the jump, because now it's a little bit more biased to the front. So, landed the nose a little bit, which it should, you know, realistically. So, I don't necessarily want to kill that if I do go over a jump. So now, yeah, it's much easier for me to control it now. That little bit of weight in the nose, like I'm really trying to kick that ass out. And remember. You know, front bias weight gives you a little bit of understeer. So both, I cut down the p-value plus cut out the, um, you know, put a little weight in the front. So it, it wants to understeer, but now it's much harder to get it to misbehave. So, like, it straightens itself right out. So that behaves really nicely now. Yeah, see, like it understeers a little bit now. So, like, if you want to make that turn, you got to slow down. Yeah, slow it down. You'll make, still, you'll be able to make a tight turn. Like, there's a tight turn. You just slow it down because the weight, the weight on the front axle wants to keep you going the way it was going. So it's gonna, um, you're not pivoting around the center point. You're, uh, you know, you're trying to rotate around something that's up up a little bit more so it's not going to let you rotate around it as readily but now it, it's nice like i'm not getting that wobble anymore so dropping that p value helped but you just got to understand what each component's doing like the difference between the p value and the steering uh the sensitivity in the seat you know like the wobble the wobble is the is the steering is the steering automatically overcompensating so you you exceeded it to the right and now it's trying to come back but it overshoots left so you get a wobble uh, you've dropped that p-value now. It's not overshooting and now it doesn't uh, wobble anymore Now if we want to stop rolling altogether just lower the uh, set CG even more, but again, this would naturally be pretty rolly probably So I like its behavior it's fun to drive it's not a chore You know And then let's go through the lighting here. So I want to make sure the lights work. So left directional is one. There's left directional. That's not going. The sides aren't going. The side one's not going. I got to fix that. Okay, two. All right, that one. The side's not going. I got to fix that. And the side's going there. Okay. Let's, let's grab a fresh one and I'll just fix it. Because I was going to say, it's some of the shit's going to be broken from me slamming the nose. Right directional needs to be there and there. Okay. Left directional needs to be there and there. All right, let's go try it now. I need to color the headlights too. All right. All right, let's do one. There we go. Two. Uh, three, what is three? Three is hazards. Okay, four is headlights. 
Should bring on the dash lights as well. It does. Beautiful. All right. Uh, let's see. Five is high beams. Yep, they go high. Oh, five. Yeah, that screws me up. I need to do uh, park brake is space. So I'm just going to change that out to space. All right. That needs to change. All right, let's change that. Five, where's space? Park break, okay. That needs to change for a bunch of shit. All right, it's all right. Uh, where are we at here? Trigger is gonna be the new park break. I gotta go through and fix all this stuff that uses that. Yeah, I always forget if it's 31 or 32. Thirty-one. Okay. Thirty-two is occupied. All right, there we go. That should fix that. All right. Keep going through those. So let's do six, four, five. Nice space bar. Yep. See that does that. Space bar zeroes us out. Yep. Okay. Let's go in a reverse. There's reverse. Yep. Yep. Let's make sure we go backwards in reverse. We do. Reasonable speed. I might release this version without the um, tipping bed. I don't know. Let's see. I don't know if I can texture. I can't really texture this back here very effectively here. Let's work the paint a little bit. Now to get this done. So let's see. Uh, let's go ahead additive. I want to do my headlight color that I use. There we go. Get rid of additive. Let's go grab you. Let's go ahead and I want, oh, I don't know, 10 darker on this. Yeah, 10 darker. Let's see. 17, 20, 28. All right, there we go. There we go. There. That is, I don't like that. I don't like that. I think that should have that licked there. All right. Oh, come on. Where is it? Right there. There it is. Okay. See how that paint looks. Yep, put a little dark shadow down there, brightens up the top a little bit, makes that pop a little bit on the corners and the top. I need to do right here though. This is showing a shadow and it should be showing a bright spot right here. Okay. There we go, that pops now in the corners instead of being a dark shadow. This is just, it's on the, on the dark side of the build. So. I think overall the paint looks pretty good there. I like the tire not to show, but kind of have to deal with it there. Like, if I was going to put something on there, it'd be, the wheel wells would have to be pretty... That's excessive, but... 
Is it worth it for that little bit? I don't know. And then I can't fold the sides if I do that. I don't know if I want to put the folding sides on anyway. Just lean it towards just let, let me see the tire. Don't think I'm going to do the folding sides on it right now. Maybe I'll add it in the, in the future, but kind of. I think it's looking pretty good. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty, pretty good here. Do one quick test run, make sure everything's working again, but I think everything's good here. I might be a little bit sensitive on the seat. I might drop it by two. I want to feel a little heavier. It's not a big truck, you know, so it doesn't need to feel super duper heavy. Like, you see, I can really easily... It's fun. It's playful. You know, you can, you can spin it out if you want. You can drive over some bumps. Even with that bumper being low, as long as you're, like, not complete jackass, you're going to be all right. You know, you go over a cliff, you're going to hit something. It's not a rally truck it's a road truck you know but like you know we're we're humming along here at 163 kilometers an hour this is gonna be a bump oh no that's a bump <laughs> hey we didn't make it in the drink though i did see that coming so i was like oh shit that's coming that's the nice thing with the doors is he just popped it open with the doors it is damaged but you can see, we, it's it's fun. It's uh, lively. It's good to drive with. All right, good. So let's go ahead, and I think I'm gonna. I think we're good here. I'll you know, I'll use it in the career build series, and we'll give it some uh, love, and it will get some uh, improvement as needed. But I'll we'll release it now. So let's go ahead and get a pick. Let me make sure this hood works. Oh, that's backwards. Okay, hood's backwards. Um, let's just grab this. Now nah, let's see. Why won't you grab? You're fucking literally touching it. Oh my god, I hate it when it does that. Come on, grab. All right, I'm just gonna do the number. I'm not screwing around with it. Um, let's see. Where's that going? Right there. Look at the engine bay to it and look at that. All right, pretty good. This block is back. Why are you back? I don't understand. I don't know what this gray block is all about. It's there. All right. All right. This is going to be branded as uh, it's going to be my brand. But again, for the competition, you guys can use the brand of the vehicle. A couple more paint things to fix here. That there, and that can stay black like so. All right, uh, let's go ahead and save it. I'm gonna brand it my my brand. Let me change the name. I'm trying to think what I want to do. So it's gonna be Pat branded. Stand by. <laughs> All right. Uh. <laughs> How about this? Let's, let's see about this. Stop. I can't put periods in.
How about that? Pat Motors Pillock Damp. <laughs> I like that one. Pat Motors Pillock Damp. So for those who don't know, Pillock means a uh, stupid person. If somebody's a complete Pillock. It was either going to be the Pillock. So these are the two choices. The Pillock Damp or the Pillock Cramp. <laughs> cramp is probably closer to Champ. Let's do Cramp. No, Pillock Cramp. <laughs> <laughs> now let's go ahead and take some promotionals. My arm is sticking in the door. Jackass. Appreciate. There we go. Get a recording. I need a. I always put a GIF on these. Let's do this GIF. Big fucking jump there. God damn. I literally, like, I literally put the, the f it's, it's on there. It should be run, it should be continued to rev. jump out of the sucker if yeah. fuck off alright I'm not even gonna bother it's pissing me off now like I would love it if the, if the devs would just like put in some proper cameras for us to use it's like we give them free advertising all the time just they like, put in some proper cameras like chase cameras Flyby cameras, all that shit would be really helpful to like do some free advertising for your game, man. Just friggin' put them in. The camera sucks in this. It's just very basic. And so I have to do it in like third person. That sucks. It really does. Yeah, I'm trying to get a Trying to get a GIF here, so I gotta wait for all that shit on the bottom to go away. Then I gotta cut around everything else. I'm not gonna worry about the GIF here. I'm in kind of like a no man's land here anyway, where it's nothing to do. I was trying to get the jump off this, like that. Okay. Fucking under the under the map again. All right, fuck the GIF. Not worried about it. That's pissing me off. You can't tell. Oh, that's stupid, man. Just like the lack of proper camera is like that was something that Star System did early because you know they, you know, billion dollars they can't be bothered to pay for their own advertising. So, but it is something cool. You can make cool cine, cine you know, cinematography and everything else, and and. Uh, you know, you can do flyby cameras, and you can do chase cameras, and you can do all the distortion shit you want to do uh, right off the bat. And it's like, that's that's shit is cool. You know, you can, that helps them sell their product, and it helps us have fun playing it. And it's like, do it. Rant over. Where you at here? Let's see if I can find the windmills. Put it the same place the other one was. Yeah, as long as it's not the problem is the fucking parking brake's not gonna be on. So I gotta get there and I gotta shut put the parking brake on. Is that need to wait for the doors to shut so I can't put it on static so the doors will shut. Let's see. Fill a cramp. Alright. 
<laughs> old pellet cramp. Uh, it, it, is, it does make me laugh though. The old pellet cramp. <laughs> not the ball. Not to be confused with the ball cramps, but uh, the pellet cramp. I gotta jump in there right quick and put that parking brake on. It's not moving. It's actually all right. So. It'll put me in here, too. All right. There we go. I'll make the GIF the windmills again. Okay. GIF will be the windmills again. All right, that's all I need for the GIF. Take a... See if I can get a reasonable me with it and the windmills going. We'll do a GIF and a promotional picture at the same time. All right. Uh, you, I hate how he doesn't look the right direction, but whatever. Fucking car sliding the side. It's supposed to be a GIF. Sit still, dickhead. <laughs> Just block it with my carcass. There we go. I'm going to block it with my carcass. There we go. Stop that shit. All right, we got some stuff. Very frustrating. <laughs> All right, I had to use my carcass to get it to stop sliding. Freaking annoying. Whatever. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get this work shop page going here. Yeah, it's a reasonable amount of pictures to stick with. All right, I gotta put it up first. Let's do that. Yep, yeah, so that's kind of the plan of this uh, this workbench or whatever the hell I called it. What do I call it? Workshop? Captain's Workshop? Yeah, Captain's Workshop. Workshop's where they're going, so they're going in the workshop. <laughs> the pill of cramp I like, though. Oh, that tickles me. The old pellet cramp. Let's go here. I'll bring up I'll do the art here in a second. And I got a couple screenshots. I guess we can work with here. Let's see. That one works. I like that one best. Let me get display cap up so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So we gotta get. So let's go to a fixed ratio 400 by 400. It needs to be even. There we go too gonna be too close to show the whole vehicle eh, cripe that could be a regular picture did I get one far enough away that one okay barely barely there we go Let's see.
the layer mode too. Why won't you type? There we go. Hold the mouse button, you can drag it where you need it. I'll try to remember to do that because if I miss one, I have to start over again. So there is a way to get it so that it, um, it will highlight them all, but I have to do it row by row. I can drag the little thing in too, but I'm going to make sure that it's on the money. <laughs> the pellet cramp has me freaking rolling. Ah, uh, I like the pellet cramp. <laughs> Makes me laugh. That's what's important. Your build should make you laugh. Suck today, you're gonna do what you're supposed to do there, guy. There you go. There you go. go in the right letters, you scum. There you go in the right letters, you scum. Could I could have zoomed into this one and made my life a lot easier to start with, but whatever. Struggle is the way. What would we, what would we be without struggle? Such as is in his fourth game in ten minutes. There we go. Pat motor introduces <laughs> pillow <laughs> All right, I like it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll resize the image. That's the thumbnail. Five twelve by five twelve. All right. PNG again for those who don't know. The old pillow cramp. <laughs> Alright, there we go. We can get back in the game here. Let's put the pillow cramp up. Bingo. Done. Land. Alright, 
Okay, let's go ahead and we'll work on this. GIF. Gotta be the GIF. Yeah, there's the GIF. That's the one I want to make it like, so let's grab Jiffy. Let's see which one I found that doesn't suck. Um, I'm gonna grab my files here. Get out of there. Uh, let's go over there. Oh, but I still have something recording. That's not good. That one's going to be long as hell. That's probably the one I wanted to. So I should be able to grab the front of that. All right. Yeah, that's got it sliding down the hill. So that one's pretty much, this is the only one that's salvageable. All right, let me see if I can get, I got to cut it a little to get into Jiffy. All right, stand by. I got to uh, go back to the game real quick. And I will quickly fix this in DaVinci. Just need to trim it down on what it's going to be, or else it's going to be a pain in the ass to get in there. Actually, no, I can trim it directly. Let's see if I can get it trimmed out in VLC. I'll close out DaVinci. That's going to be easiest. All right. Yeah, I don't want to uh, I don't wanna bother with that. Let's go ahead and do quickly. I'll bring it up, and then we'll quickly trim it out uh, with VLC. All right, so v VLC has a thing here where if you go... Stop playing it. Um, let's go media, convert, save, add. Um, let's see. I'm going to add the file there that we're just working on. All right. And then. Okay, that's good. All right, and then just put it somewhere. Let's see, this is the um, Hillock GIF. Right, it'll take uh, VLC a second to get that going here, so let's go back, we'll clean up, we'll start working the workshop page a little bit uh, while that's converting the the GIF over. That's got to convert it to the file, that, to the type that Jiffy uses, and then uh, we'll be good there. All right, so let's see, um, work on the title and description here. So, Pata Force Fine with uh, let me check it. I think it's pretty much the same as the Pat Me. I don't have any mirrors on here. I'm not gonna put mirrors on. Uh, 175. Yep, that's correct. That is uh, two, 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 five, two and a quarter. All right. Let's see. Width, height, two and a quarter. Length. We gotta check that. So that's five and a quarter. Okay. Oh, 
five and a quarter. That's all set there. Fuel diesel max speed. Uh, what was it? 163 meters per second or kilometers per hour. 163. So um, we'll just do 100. Seats uh, two. Weight. 457, 457. All right, six-start engine, WSXL brake, 80 steering up, down, shift, gear space, park brake, shift pattern. Uh, I've got a picture on there that's the same. H menu should be the same. Door and hood latches I need new pictures of for those who can't figure out how to work doors or hood latches. All right, so let's save that real quick. Let's get that. Go, yeah, the driver's door is there. there somebody will ask they'll ask even if I put the, the toggle button on there or they can see it um, they will ask GPG should probably be smaller. Uh, let's see, this is hood. Let's make them small. Um, let's do cancel, piss off with your noise there thing. Resize these, let's make them smaller. Um, Okay, good. H menu should be the same as the um, H menu should be the same as the uh, Patney, but I'll double check it. So this one is where are we at here? Okay, that one is the hood latch. So you want to make sure you copy image address as, uh, and that's what you want to use for the image fold, the image uh, block quotes there, or else it's not gonna work. So. There they are, so if somebody can't figure out how to open the hoods and latches, there it is. Shift pass, steering, accelerate, brake, left, right, yep, they're all the same. All right, good, so that helps. That's good. Just need the new GIF. Now, let me see if that's ready. Hard to tell. Let me check it real quick. Where's the GIF of it? That doesn't look like it's done yet. Unfortunately, I let that run for too long, so it's long, so it might take it a second to cut it. Check on it. I'm trying to think if we should just cut it now or what. Problem is I can't see with VLC if, it, if it's making any friggin' progress or not, so it's kind of annoying. 
So go ahead and I'm gonna, I'll uh, trim it in DaVinci real quick and then make it a lot faster because I only need a couple seconds. It'll take me a second to just trim it out in DaVinci. stuff or projectos. Let's see where I want it. Um, let's see. What do I want to call it here? Let's say uh, Pillock GIF. GIF 1. I probably have to save it as 2 again. So. <laughs> There we go, that's good. Let's go ahead and uh, try to get uh, this to work again with uh, VLC. So, All right, VLC, convert, save, add that on there. Convert, browse it out, stick it over there. Two. So it's it's saving as a containers um, uh, MP4. So I need that uh, in order to turn it into a GIF or else it's not gonna take it. So I think it's file size reasons. All right, it looks done. Let me check it real. Oh, that's a Tarkov video. All right, good. That works. All right, so that should be able to be made a GIF. I'll show you guys a dark uh, video too before I go. No, Alistair has been interested in that. The um, I had a funky ass uh, raid yesterday. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you the story as I'm working on this. The um, all right. So I'll show you the way I, I do this. Uh, if you want to stitch your um, if you want to stitch your GIF together, this one's actually not too hard. Look at the blades. So the way I like to do it is I gotta stop it real quick. How do I pause it? No way to pause it. So I need to see where it starts. So it's starting up top, and so I need to stop it when it gets up top. So you see how it's jumping? It's going back, so I need to keep pulling it until it's in the exact same spot, which there it's still too far. There we go. Oh, nope, it's doing it again there. It's close. Might be going the wrong way now. Yeah, it's going the wrong way now. There we go. That's that's seamless right there. So like you see, you have this little you can tick by uh, frame by frame, and so you just got to get it lined up uh, so it doesn't jump. Now it's seamless. Same dilly on this, right click on it, grab copy image address, or else it's not gonna work. If you don't do that, it's not going to work um, in when you put it into uh, Stame. So then we just go in here, and then you find where that is right here, and put it in the image area. Should be able to space that out, and then that should hopefully be good. There we go, and that's in, so. Pretty simple, uh, I'm gonna put, so again, that's requirement of the challenge. Again, I'm just, you know, this kind of stuff you can do on um, your page if you like for the challenge. So like, for example, here it's, right here, it's this based off the Hylex Champ. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put right underneath it, the Wikipedia article, and I'm gonna put a, 
spells parenthesis on this. Uh, IMG space sl uh, slash IMG. If you need to find that stuff at the bottom of the page, it will tell you how to format. And then another parentheses. All right, so that's where uh, I'm going to put a picture of the champ. So some people have been worried about doing this um, with attribution. I'm doing copy image address again. The link is there. People want to go find the link that's there. They can't really do anything to you. It's got the link. All right, the link is literally there. If you right click on this, you can copy the page URL and you can go there. So it's not me saying this is my picture. Um, so I wouldn't really be worried about it if I were you guys. Copy the image address, post it in there. You don't have to save the picture and then do it like that. Uh, you know, and then literally if you do copy page URL, it will go to the URL where you found that picture. Um, did it? What the fuck? Maybe it didn't. Let's see. If I, oh, it, it's copying the entire page address. But I put the link where I got the picture from. So just do that. I know some people worry about it. You don't really have to be worried about it. Um, just do that so you can kind of see um, how it's going to end up there. So... I think that's a pretty good page there. Let's see. Uh, let's check for errors. Pat Motors. <laughs> Pat Motors. Uh, let's do this. Put a colon on there. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Pat Motors. Pillock cramp. <laughs> <laughs> the little pilgrim utility truck. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, you know, let's let's put something on here too. I will link this video. So let's go add images and videos. Um, it's fine. Why did you close the the file, dude? Close the file. I didn't click click on anything, you dickhead. Um, Closing it on its own. There we go. Again, uh, just a reminder for the challenge participants. Workshop page is worth full 10 points. It doesn't have to be like, it doesn't have to be 200 pages long. It just like, you know, put some effort in there, especially for this challenge. I need a picture of what inspired you so that I can say, oh, that's yours. This is what it should look like. Yours, that's what it should look like. It looks like it, it doesn't. It looks like it, it doesn't. You know, and then I can be like, okay, well, you know, for obvious reasons, it has to be taller because of the game, you know, but, you know, certain things like that, you can at least uh, give it a look, you know. And then other other things are nice, like just showing me simple things like how to operate it. It's like, you know, because if I'm in there for 20 minutes trying to figure out how to operate, it sucks where it's nice and easy here, just Operation, okay, press six, start the engine. That's how I drive, that's how I steer. Okay, shift, space, brake, off. Good H menu, all set to go. You know, if I can't find the handles, bingo, done. You know, so pretty simple there. Um, nice thumbnail, like it doesn't have to be the most, you know, doesn't have to be super labor intensive. You see, it didn't take me long to get the thumbnail done, but it's something, it, it's a little bit of in interest in there. Pick a cool spot in the map and just put a little bit of branding on there, something, you know. It's a lot more interesting than like some of the, the vacant ones you find on there. All right, so that should be public now. Let me go ahead and we'll grab a link here. Again, if you guys do enjoy it, uh, give it an upvote. That helps people find it in the workshop. Um, a downvote is absolutely, it, kill, it kills you. That took me out of the top five. One week was um, one downvote completely fucked me. You know, it's, I... I don't know why people are downvoting builds. Like, if, it, if the build doesn't work at all, I get it. But, like, some people are just pricks, I guess. Um, you know, because, like, you could have you could have 10 people upvote it and then one person downvote it, and bingo, it's, it's screwed, it's gone. And it's, um, you know, that person might have actually not liked the build, but also, like, there was a, there was a controversy for a while where some of the build teams... Uh, like some of the people were like either their competitors or just people that didn't like them 
where downvoting their builds to get them kicked out of the top five. And it's just stupid shit like that that's just juvenile. But, um, but yeah, if you guys do enjoy it, just uh, give it a little thumbs up uh, if you like it. If you don't enjoy it, uh, leave. <laughs> no, just... It's, it's I, you know, I, I understand downvoting stuff, but it's like, it's just the way that it works for things to get in the workshop, it just completely fucks it. And it's like, you know, there have been builds, there was one in, in the weekly top five that literally did not work. Like, you got in it, and it did not work. And so, like, it looked good, but it did not work. And so it's like, stuff like that sucks. You know, that, um, you know... You, somebody downloads it and then they're playing with it for like 20 minutes and like it had so many comments because the build just didn't work like people couldn't get it to work at all and so that that's kind of tough you know but um, for the most part I'm not a big fan of like having a downvote on this type of thing is it's just like you know if if you don't like it just move on you know because like for example if you don't like submarines you know and you're like oh, I don't like the submarines and you downvote because you don't like submarines in general it's pretty you know, you're, it's like, for example, if somebody asked me if I like Days of Our, you know, I don't like Days of Our Lives, and if they asked me to rate Days of Our Lives, of course I'm going to give Days of Our Lives a low score because I don't like that type of show, right? Uh, so, but my opinion is pretty useless because the people looking for, you know, an upvote or a downvote are the people who already enjoy that thing. So, like somebody who's a Days of Our Lives fan and downvotes Days of Our Lives episode, that person is is you know, more reliable because they are, uh, you know, that's, that's what they're into, you know? Yeah. I like the pellet cramp too. Thanks, Alistair. <laughs> the pellet cramp is good. I like that. It's, uh, it's quite funny, but, uh, yeah. So that's what this, uh, this series is going to be about. Like, I'm going to try to get this, like, that's not too bad. Four hours, got it on the workshop. Like, you know, most of it is crafting the thing. But, you know, I do a little bit more time to make sure I drive it and it drives well and everything else. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy with it for the most part. It's a pretty simplistic build. I think the lines are pretty good. It's, it's an all-white build, which is tough. Certain things I would have liked to do that I couldn't do, for example, like, if you look at, it's supposed to be body on frame, so there's supposed to be a gap here. Like, I can't really put a gap in there. Like, one thing I could maybe do is put some linear track segments, like here. And maybe do this. Uh, yeah, this could be something I could do like that and then do... Like, put a linear track, something to get a gap in there because, like, body on frame, if you don't... Like, body on frame is like that so that it, it has... This, you have the frame of it and then they actually just put the bed and this and the cab on top of the... You know, now they do unibodies... And so, for the most part, they're, you know, with a unibody, it's it's what most cars are now. They're one piece. You know, they don't do, they used, you know, trucks used to all be body on frame. Like, so you could do that, but that's, I don't like the look of it. It's too great out there. Like, one thing I could do here, let's actually, we'll update a little bit here. Let's do this. Um, let's grab it. I got a little bit of a line there for uh, to do body and frame. Like that's how much line I need. So it's like the other you trying to use those uh, linear track pieces is just not going to work. You know they have that too much of a gray spot there and kind of funkifies it. Like something like that. You you know you used to be able to, you could stick a hand between that spot on a pickup because it's literally it's a bed bolted onto the frame. You know it's not actually part of it. Um, it's bolted on like you know it's bolted on to the under frame now they do uh, unibodies which is pretty much the frame is the body's part of the frame for most stuff trucks still do that because like you'll 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 tweak the and torque the frame you don't want to do that so add that little thing on there this is the only thing like right here I'm not sure about this line right there and so what I was thinking is like going maybe to Something like that is one thought I had. I think I like that better. 
a little bit straighter up, straight up and down a little bit more. So a couple, a couple little lines changes there, I think. Make sure the fuel's plugged in properly. It is okay. That's plugged in properly. I don't have an air relief on the fuel, so we could probably put that in. That would probably be helpful. Let's do that while we're here. Let's not do symmetry and destroy something that works. Let's go like this. How far does that go? Okay, right. It's right up against the iron. That ventilates the tanks. We'd probably be fine without it, but I like to ventilate my tanks. So the tanks are ventilated now. Should be pretty good for the most part. I can't see any real issues with this build at the moment. Pretty content with it. It makes it, they actually make it really easy to just like put the latest version up. Like that's all it takes. It takes all two seconds to put the latest version up. Some games are a pain in the ass and then you gotta go back and like manually update it. But it'll be fun using this in the uh, career build series and hope you, you guys enjoy it. You know, if you guys have any ideas for this, eventually I might put up a channel so you guys can put up some ideas you have. But just, uh, actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, instead of having, like, an overly convoluted Discord, <laughs> just go ahead and put them in uh, motorized things. If, like, if you see a cool motorized thing, why did the up why did you fail to update, guy? Um, just go ahead and put in motorized things, you know, and then if I see something cool, maybe I'll build that, you know. It's always good to have inspiration from that stuff. Some cool builds going on. I'm just checking out your guys' builds on the uh, discussion. So, you know, one reason why I'm, I'm not, like, doing uh, fantasy builds or, like, uh, concepts is it becomes it becomes a whole thing where it's, like, is it actually, like, a real vehicle or is it some, like, thing that just somebody thought up and never made and now you're trying to make it and it's, like, I'd rather, like, just, just take a build that they were actually used in the world and, and replicate it. Like, you know, that's kind of more what I'm trying to do. Uh, let's see. Let's get saved. Let's save it again, and then I will. So, might be having a problem talking to, uh, to Steam. If not, I can up update it later. It's just a couple cosmetic things, but, yeah, I was thinking of putting it in the fold-out uh, sides, but you can't have them lay flat against the side uh, and they're too bulky. Like, they'd be pretty thin. Those are nice to be able to drop it and put a flat bed on there, but it's like, it, they're too bulky and mirrors would just be too bulky. You know, I could put some fake mirrors on there, but that doesn't really interest me. I'd rather put on real mirrors. Um, they're too bulky and especially something small like this that you can turn around and look out the back window. You don't really need it. Alright, so it does not want to uh, upload on the workshop right now, so... I don't know why it's doing that. You know, I don't think it really needs those, you know. All right, so I think a little line to show its body on frame is, is helpful. All right, it's saved. I'll, up, I'll update it later. It's just it does not want to do it. Does not wish to do it. Um, yes, update that close. Let's see. Just closing some things, guys. Yep, it's a really cool build so far on the um, on, on Kilo. Can't think of any real like rule changes. I for the most part I've been pretty obstinate lately anyway on rule changes. I pretty much say no to everything. Um, I do mostly for clarification at this point. Like I'm pretty much sticking with the rules anyway. But like sometimes you know it's more like people bring up like for example one one challenge Phil was like what's the wind going to be at you know and that was like a something that is good to be added to the rules so that people know what that's going to be all about but uh yeah for the most part so uh, thank you guys for everybody who helped me get affiliate on twitch that helps out um just gives me a little bit you know lets people find me if they like to watch me there more 
Um, and then, you know, there's some things there if you want to sub to me on there. If you have an Amazon Prime subscription that you're not using, if you're not sub to anyone else, you can throw it my way. And uh, that way I get a little something out of it. You guys don't have to watch ads on Twitch. And um, it helps us both out. Um, so I appreciate you guys over there. You can also do things like bits and everything else if you like. Um, Twitch has some benefits that are just kind of fun for uh, interacting. Like if I ever do some of the, more of the Tarkov stuff, like they have some funny stuff that's called like BitBot where you can uh, actively, like you can make somebody drop their gun by by putting in bits and then they drop their gun or they throw a grenade at their own feet and stupid shit like that. But um, yeah, so I thank you guys for helping me out with that. That uh, took a little while, but I appreciate that. That was uh, as well appreciating that. So I hope you guys are enjoying Kilo. Hope you guys enjoy the new series here. So we'll be building stuff periodically. Um, and it gives me a good excuse when I can't think of anything else to build. So uh, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.